Welcome back, riders around the world. My name is Gary Solomon, and you're watching The Laid Back Bike Report. What a show we have for you guys today. We are going to have uh, an assembly of panelists that uh, probably has not been seen online ever. So we'll introduce those guys to you in just a minute. And we're going to talk about what we saw at Recumbent CycleCon 2019. We just got back, um, oh, just a week ago. Um, and we are going to share all the experiences uh, that we had there. And uh, hopefully you guys will have some questions for us and uh, make some comments on the live chat. So before we get to that, let's introduce the panelists I was just talking about. First, from Zaltskitter, Germany, it's our director, Lars Kamm. Hi, folks. Good to be here. Good to be home, though. <laughs> <laughs> Lars was with us for a couple of weeks, he and his lovely wife, Marion, and uh, they did a little bit of traveling while they were here in the States. So it's it's great to see you back ensconced uh, at home, Lars. Great to have you with us. Great to be here. Also, our uh, senior media wrangler, it is Trey Burgoyne. Hey, Trey. Hello, everybody. How are y'all today? Well, I think they're good. I'll speak for all of them. Trey, good to have you with us. And I said senior uh, media wrangler because we have uh, we have a guy who's coming on as a panelist now, helping us out, and he's going to be training today on that uh, on the uh, slideshow. And that is from Des Moines, Iowa. Tim Kane. Hello, Tim. Hello, Gary. It's great to have you with us. Uh, good luck today. I, I Thank think you. it's great. All right. And now let's go to Sarah, Pennsylvania, where, we'll find, where we will find our sports director. It's Denny Voorhees. Denny, hello. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, from south of the border. We're back. Uh, quite a trip. A lot of fun. Really enjoyed it. All right. Yeah, it was a great time. All right. Let's go just a little bit north to Rochester, New York, where we'll find Brian Ball. Hello, Brian. Hello, that's me. Just checking to see how I look there. All right, good. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me on. This is always one of my favorite shows of the year. So we love it too. Yeah, the hat looks great. By the way, that lighting is awesome. So I'm I'm in uniform today. Looks good. I got the Bent Rider shirt on too. So which Very I will nice. plug at some point because these are going to be available on the website tomorrow. I think you just did, but yeah. you're welcome to do it again. Yeah. All right, Brian. Great. Now let's go to Cold Spring, Kentucky, where we will find Larry Varney. Hi, Larry. Hi, everyone. It's good to see you all again, uh, somewhat. So anyway, looking forward to hearing what everybody has to say and see all the pictures today. Yeah, we're, we're glad to have you on, and we look forward to hearing what you have to say, too. Uh, all right, now let's uh, stay in New York. Let's go to Alfred Station, where we'll find the bicycle man, Peter Stoll. Hello, Peter. Hey, how you doing? All right. Wow, that is a lot of light on your face. You said more light. I don't <laughs> yeah. Know. Uh, it's Halloween. Yeah, that's there you go. go. Oh, that's yeah. Good. All right. So don't listen to what I say, Peter. You know better than that. Well, All right. let's uh, let's head out west uh, to uh, Portland, Oregon, where we will find the amazing Sylvia Halpern. Hello, Sylvia. Yay, everybody! It, it's great to have you on. And so, folks, that is our panel. Uh, they're going to all talk to you about what they, uh, what they experienced at uh, CycleCon. And uh, by doing that, I hope uh, you guys get a good idea of what it was like for those of you who didn't attend. All right. Uh, I mentioned the live chat, and I want to talk to you just for a second here about it. We have a ton of people on we see already. Please participate. Ask your questions. Make your comments. This is our first webcast that is uh, simultaneously being uh, casted to both YouTube and to Facebook. 
So we hope uh, that you guys will avail yourself of the comments there on the uh, Facebook page, the Layback Bike Report Facebook page. And if you're on YouTube, uh, you guys know what to do. It's the live chat right next to the, um, the video, the live video. All right. Uh, also, we would hope that you guys will like, subscribe, and uh, hit that little white eye up above there and find out more information about the Laidback Bike Report. It'll take you right to our webpage. Today's show is sponsored by TerraCycle, makers of exquisite recumbent parts and accessories for your bent and trailside.bike, a fine recumbent bike shop on the Withlacoochee Trail and Cruise Bike, designed for the cyclist who wants to ride farther climb faster, and adventure more. All cruise bikes and frame sets ship free in the USA. And Lightning Cycles, the aerospace designed and race across America owning recumbent you've always wanted. All right, guys, so let's get into it. We got a lot to talk about today. Uh, briefly, I'm gonna tell you that uh, the Laidback Bike Report and its crew all hustled down to Nashville last weekend, uh, and we uh, spent a good deal of time doing interviews, um, doing some test riding, getting great shots of all of the bikes and trikes and accessories that are there. That will be available hopefully in a couple of weeks uh, on our uh, comprehensive uh, CycleCon video that we produce every year. But today's show is going to be more a slideshow of some pictures of the things that we saw. And you're going to get our panel's uh, uh, impressions of the things that they saw there. So let's start, uh, I think, by getting the general impressions of our panel about the, this year's CycleCon. I will tell you that uh, for my part, I thought CycleCon was very well attended this year, maybe the best that I've seen since being there. Um, I will tell you that another thing that impressed me was the uh, the test track. I thought they did a great job this year. It's a it was a relatively extensive one. It had it was under cover and and outside as well, and uh, and I thought people had a great chance to uh, really test out the bikes and trikes on that track. And the facility itself was was great. It was a brand new facility there at the fairgrounds in Nashville. Um, and uh, everything looked great. It was clean and new. They were still actually working on it. So those are my overall impressions. And uh, Denny, let's start with yours. If you could tell us uh, what you thought about CycleCon briefly. Uh, it was good. I think this is my third, maybe fourth one. And uh, it was a long drive uh, for me. It was uh, took quite a long time, but, but it was well worth it. Uh, I got to room with uh, Larry Varney, the legendary Larry Varney, by the way. <laughs> And uh, I, I was a little bit under the weather most of the trip. I, I had a cold and, and I was trying not to be patient zero while I was there. But um, all the uh, it was laid out very well, um, easy to get around. A uh, lot of uh, people. Uh, I, I agree with you. I think the ones I've attended, I think that was probably the busiest one on Saturday. Um, and Friday's pretty laid back. You get to ride just about anything and, and uh, schmooze a little bit with, uh, with everybody. So uh, good facility. Um, I looking forward to Dayton next year just because it's not going to be uh, a full two days of drive. So right. I'm, I'm uh, pretty excited about that. Very good. All right. Thanks. Hey, let's go to uh, Brian. Brian, your overall impression of CycleCon this year. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree a bit about the attendance. I didn't think it was that great this time, but that often happens when it's the second year at the place, so it didn't really like freak me out or anything. But especially on Sunday, um, but I really love Nashville. It's a great place, and I do agree the test track was great. Uh, what the way they had it set up on uh, the dealer day was a, a bit uh, treacherous, but they changed it for when when the uh, the civilians came in. And then it was it was really excellent. Um, I did really like that a lot, um, and it is a great facility. It was very nice. Uh, yeah, but they but yeah they were still building it as we were there, which was uh, that was kind of funny. All right, Peter, tell us what you thought of uh, of CycleCon as a whole. Well, it was certainly a shiny building. 
to go along with all the shiny bikes and trikes. So that was nice. I do think the it was the the dealer day, the test track was kind of fun, but it was definitely not something you'd want to send novices on to. So they corrected that the second day, and it was very nice for novices the second day. Um, I thought attendance was pretty poor on Sunday and Saturday. I thought was about average, but no, I didn't. I don't have a count on that. So and it was interesting. Some of the new products we saw. I, uh, actually, the most interesting thing I thought about new products was that most of them were electric. That was a huge thing. I'm sure we're going to talk more about that. All right. Thanks, Peter. Larry, tell us what you thought of the overall show. Well, I could say that I agree with what everybody said, but there were some contradictions, so I won't. Uh, but <laughs> you don't have to agree, Larry. That's I know. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I, I had to, well, chime in with saying, yeah, it did seem like everybody was suddenly becoming electric, but we already knew of that before we even got down there. Uh, but I, one thing I noticed, and I know some people have complained about some way, is that there aren't many two-wheelers around, you know, being displayed and all that. But then the few that were there, it seemed like nobody was taking them out, you know. Uh, that made me feel kind of bad uh, for the the two-wheeled recumbent builders because there was some, well, really good one. I'm trying to think of it. it was Carter or something like really good. Carver. Yeah, yeah Carver. Carver. I knew it was something like that. That was the tie glide, the guys that we yeah. had yeah. last month. That was yeah. the uh, and of course, then, uh, you know, A.D. Carson's uh, uh, Recycle. recumbent, recumbent recycled. Recycled recumbents, yeah. Uh, um, we're really good. But anyway, okay. you know, I like the show in general. Uh, the weather was great. Um uh, I'll be glad when it comes to Dayton, too, even though Nashville's nice. It's not that far from me as it is for some of you others, but uh, Dayton will be nice. I think everybody's going to enjoy it up in Dayton. But if any of you live in Dayton watching the show, please email us and tell us what there is to do in Dayton. Because oh, I'm, kind of, I'm oh. kind of bewildered. Well, we'll get, oh, on, we'll get out of that, but the, the trails. The museum, yeah. The trails. The trails. The restaurants. The yeah. trails, you know, yeah. the, that is right there by Xenia. There are hundreds of miles. I've of never spent any there. time in Dayton in my entire life, so I'm kind <laughs> of uh, kind of curious. Okay, we'll we'll get on to that. Lots Sylvia, Sylvia, go ahead and tell us about your overall impressions of CycleCon this year. Well, this was really special for me because all other years I've been on tour, so I couldn't even go. And this year I was sponsored, which was the first time I, that's ever happened for me. Thank you, Laid Back Bike Report. And the biggest thing for me was just meeting everybody that I talked to online and have had relationships with forever. Um, I, thought the, I thought the event went really well. I couldn't compare it to other years, um, but I would say especially Saturday, well, especially Sunday, I really, I wasn't all that impressed with, uh, with the attendance. Um, but that meant the bikes and trikes were more available and I rode a ton. I loved it. I thought it was super fun just trying out all these bikes and trikes. Very yeah. good. And that's not uncommon for the Sunday. Like I, I didn't mean to kind yeah. of bag on it, but yeah. that's not uncommon for Sunday. Cause I don't even try to ride anything until Sunday. Yeah. You're like, right, Brian. Of course, yeah. the Sunday was definitely, uh, way down in terms of the tenants. I just I was mostly talking about Saturday, which I thought was pretty busy. So. Yeah, whatever. Let's uh, let's bring up our a couple of the guys backstage. Uh, Lars, uh, can you uh, can you bring yourself up and tell us about your impression? <laughs> yes, I can. So, well, basically, uh, RCC was a first for me, and um, you know, um, compared to shows in Germany or the show in Germany, it's quite small. But um, you know, I think um, having or keeping in mind was uh, what Hardy said about the early years of Spezi. I think this event, if it's continued like this, it's going to grow from year to year, and it's going to be well, it's destined to be a big show. And overall, I liked what I what I saw over there. So, and I had fun. What's more to say? That's great. All right. And speaking of having fun, here's a guy that I know had a really good time. Trey, tell us about your overall <laughs> impression uh, at CycleCon, would you? I thought it was pretty awesome. I like the new building. Um, I thought it was well attended on Saturday, especially considering the weather, that cold front that came through. You know, you had a almost a 30 degree temperature difference, you know, so it's, that was a huge difference, but, um, and I also liked all the two wheel bikes that were there. Um, the ones that were there seemed to be cream of the crop. So John's new 
freestyles and um, I, I didn't get a chance to ride that, but um, it's definitely on my short list, but I did ride a couple of other things. So I do like the new building, like the venue. It's much closer to me than Dayton, but uh, we're thinking about uh, Dayton next year, actually going up early to ride the trails like we did our first recumbent con that was in Ohio. You know, we went up for a week before and rode all the cool trails there. I'd be very surprised if there aren't a couple of organized rides yeah. around uh, the area next and year. And tailor made for that, yeah. And absolutely are. So yeah, that's perfect for it. Yep. All right, Trey, thank you so much. And, and I've said Florida and Ohio are like the recumbent like centers of the universe as far as numbers of owners. So I think it'll be very well attended next year. I think it'll be it'll be very good. Yep, mm -hmm. I think so too. Brian, while we're with you, I wanted to mention, uh, uh, now you are going to have a report from SackleCon. Tell us about your report when it's coming out. Uh, probably uh, tomorrow or the next day. Um, it, it's just, I have to do a few editing things and it honestly just depends on how quickly some manufacturers answer a couple little questions I have. Because when you go to SackleCon, there's prototypes and stuff like that. So they don't have like literature to hand out. So you gotta, gotta make sure my notes are right. But other than that, yeah, it's pretty much ready to go. So um, yeah, I'm, I'll be happy to have that out. And uh, um, and then I I brought home the aforementioned Schlitter Freestyle, which I'm sure there's some, some uh, well, well, I'm sure there's pictures of that as we go on. Yeah, we, we have uh, it in there, and I want you to talk about whatever you can talk yeah, about. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll save it for that. But yeah, and I'll review that out fairly shortly. I already put a lot of miles on it. It's why my face is all ready today. I got sunburned, so. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah. Very good. And Sylvia, um, I really hadn't asked you this before, but uh, I, I'm you took a bunch of video uh, in uh, your uh, inimitable style. You have like 27 different kinds of cameras that you use. <laughs> what uh, what, are, what are your plans? I know you've got so much going on in terms of getting out of town and getting on the road, but do you have some plans for something for CycleCon at some point? You know, I hope to. I hope to. I've got so much, so much going on. And then I've got so much material from Recumbent Cycle Con that I certainly I could do more than one video. Uh, it's really just a matter if I if I uh, have the time to do it. Right. OK. I'm but sure I, have, we'll I have a lot of photos added to that um, uh, Google Photos album and I'll have more to add to it as well. All right. And we will share that with everybody as well. So, all right. Uh, let's get into the meat of it, if we can. And back to the slideshow, um, if we can, Lars. And uh, so I'm going to just kind of narrate the beginning of this until we get to the booths with products in it. Getting into uh, CycleCon, there is Chuck Coin in the far end there, getting things Hi. ready to go. That was the registration desk. So this is the first thing you see as you walk in. Let's go to the next one. And there was the laid back bike report uh, booth and lots of lovely uh, quilts hanging in the back from my wife who does those, uh, just makes the booth looks great, look great, I should say. And uh, some of our crew, not all, Sylvia might have taken that picture because she was in there on the right. And Robert Barnett, you can see him uh, off a little bit to the left with those uh, uh, those two trikes that he has. And Robert, uh, we had on the show uh, a few months back, he does the uh, hand and foot powered uh, systems for bikes and trikes. And he was there showing off a couple of his builds. It was really a lot of fun. It was good to have he and his wife there as well. Next one. So yeah, there's a couple people looking at uh, Robert's, uh, I guess that's a bike on the right and a trike on the left. And next one. And there's, uh, so we had a fitter in there somewhere. So. Uh, she was uh, she was all over the place, but while she was around and everywhere she went, she was uh, you know she was mobbed by her fans, of course, and uh, she did a lot of uh, a lot of talking to them and sharing information. I know she had a great time, so we were glad to have Sylvia in the booth. And the next one, and uh, there's another shot uh, of some of the folks around the booth and Lisa, Lit Trey's uh, wife, right there. Is helping out next. All right, and hey, there is <laughs> the Bent Rider booth. So there's Brian and Lori. They had a great looking booth there. Brian, Hello. how did how did you do uh, at the booth? I, I think you did pretty well. Okay, uh, yeah. okay, yeah, but uh, yeah, um, we didn't sell through everything. Normally, when we do the so those tie dye T shirts, my wife hand makes. 
and um, uh, normally we sell through them, but uh, we, we do have some left. So check out tomorrow morning on uh, our site. They will be available. Just click on the merch. I don't remember what the link is called. And then uh, you can go and, and buy those. But yeah, she hand makes all those. They look great. So I always steal a couple. So I've always, <laughs> I probably have, I think I have four of them now. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, we had a good time. And it's always great seeing everybody. Yeah, we had it's always nice just talking here. to everybody. Gork fifty seven on the uh, comments there. He's he says he wants one right there. So yeah, they'll they'll be there tomorrow morning. Maybe even late tonight. I don't know when she's going to put them up. All but, right. Yes. Yeah. Thank you and thank you, Mary, for that comment. Uh, yep, we really love the quilt. So quilt all right, next cool. next picture, please. And uh, all right, so this was outside, and uh, we had um, Adaptive Adventures making the scene there at CycleCon. That's Chris on the right. And uh, in the blue shirt there, that's uh, David from Haza. And uh, Chris on the right runs Adaptive Adventures. We shot uh, about an hour of video of his presentation uh, of the amazing things that they do traveling the country and fitting folks for that have adaptive needs for uh, mostly trikes or perhaps hand cycles, all kinds of stuff. They can do almost anything. So uh, I'm excited to, I'll probably share that as a separate video and I'm going to let them have that video to share on their website as well. So really interesting folks. If there's anyone out there that has some adaptive needs and you don't know where to get information, this is the company here, adaptiveadventures.org. Hit them up. Great folks. Next, please. Yeah, there I am taking a few shots of some of the folks that were there. And the next one. And uh, there is Charlie from uh, ATOC. He was there showing his, uh, his or they're not racks. What do you call those? Um, are they called racks? I think you still call yeah. it a rack. Yeah, yeah. I they think hold, it's a rack. It's a rack. He's there and, and uh, everything <laughs> you need to like uh, carry your uh, bike or trike. Uh, and uh, good guy, Charlie. Anybody have anything on Charlie? I don't mean I don't mean in terms of like dirt. Ill illegalities yeah. or a, dirt. Com a comper mat. Yeah, yeah. It, but uh, <laughs> he's there every year. He's you know, not a whole lot new that I know of from him. But uh, one time we took. Yeah, he was uh, a Go ahead, Peter. One time we took twelve recumbents from Bicycle Man to the New York City trade show bike show, which was in the World Trade Center that year. It was two thousand one, early two thousand one. And we had four on the back with one of the ATOC uh, Draftmaster racks. It's that's a great rack. It's the best rear rack if you want to carry more than just two. It's the best. We, we're doing next year's our twentieth anniversary, and Charlie was trying to talk to us about doing anodized blue versions of his racks. And I, I want one for myself, but I'm not sure I want a bunch of them. But <laughs> right. all right, let's go on to the next one if good. And hey. there, uh, I forget the guy's name. Oh, that's Peter. That's you, man. All right. So, uh, yeah, Peter uh, and his Avenue uh, trikes were there on the scene. Uh, let's get to Peter last. Anybody, uh, I'm going to tell you that uh, Peter's always uh, got something interesting and fun to say, and we have him on uh, on video, and we'll, we'll, set, we'll have that interview, of course, in the video. But um, anybody else have anything to say about anybody else ride the avenue? I oh, still no. have one in my garage that I think Pete's probably forgotten was here. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, but I now. do. <laughs> I do. Hey, he knows now. But yeah, I I, I really enjoy riding it. So it's a, it's a yeah. really nice budget trike. It's I cool. was very impressed with it. I I had an opportunity to, to to put it through his paces there. He set it up for me, moved the seat back a little bit. I thought the balance was good. Um, I yeah. Uh, and, and it was, well, you can tell Pete's been around for a while doing this because it, I thought there was a lot of nice little tweaks in it that made it feel good. Um, you know, it was a, it was high, but not tippy. And the seat mm -hmm. was very comfortable. So <clears throat> I rather enjoyed it. It's got a pretty high weight limit. See, so the, the frame looks very, very strong. It's beefy. It's yeah. beefy. As yeah. in Peter, Peter, anything, anything about your, why don't you tell, talk to us about your experience at the booth, at your booth, anything you'd like to say about that? Oh, it was fun at the booth. We kept uh, putting people out on test rides and, you know, the bikes are better salesmen than we are. So we just tried to get you to go for a ride. It was a lot of fun. Every time I went past your booth, there were no trikes. They were always out. Yeah, that's, we like that. <laughs> yeah. 
All you, right. You know, I, and never another thing too is uh, usually with the the uh, shifters um, with grip shifters. Uh, I, I thought that that had the best ergonomic uh, feel for any of the uh, grip shifters that I tried. Yeah. Uh, they they just were they were right. I, I it's hard to explain, but they just were right. Good. All right. Let's go on to the next slide. And this was Azub, and there's our buddy Hansa there. Um, didn't spend a whole lot of time with them. Uh, guys, anybody have anything to say about Azub there? Or checked anything out? Uh, I, I, I brought, I brought the, the white. I, I carried, carried the, oh, excuse me, gosh, the uh, white um, triple 26 that's it's not in the picture um, with the uh, e-assist and stuff down there. Uh, I've had it for a while, and uh, it's, a, it's a great, great trike, very well integrated. Everything works really well, and it can go over just about anything. And Sylvia, did you have something to say? Or they're really nice looking trikes. And they look really well built. I took one out. It was really fun, very fun to ride. Okay. And uh, just a reminder, uh, Trey and Lars, if you do have anything to say, you you know, I'm I'm going to go through the lineup that we have here, but just pop yourselves in so that we can hear from you. Okay. All right. Let's move along to the next slide. And Bachetta. So um, lots of interesting stuff almost always going on with uh, with Bachetta. And uh, there was uh, Mike who talked to us. Of course, you guys by now know all about the uh, CT 2.0, uh, which uh, they say are now starting to get caught up with uh, with demand. But at the show, they actually uh, popped out a new prototype. E assisted CT 2.0, what 2.0 E or something they call it. Yeah. It, uh, and uh, next slide, I think we have eventually some shots of it. Next slide. And there is uh, Trey. We're going to bring him up in a second. Let's start. To, Brian, do you, what, what did you uh, think about the. It's, uh, it's, I have a CT 2.0. And I was just, I was impressed by how uh, subtle it is visually, the e-assist. It's very well integrated. Mm. You hardly even see that it's there. From one side of the trike, you can't tell at all. You know, I, and uh, I, know, I don't, I, I didn't have all the stats on it. I've got an email from them that I haven't, I don't remember all the stats of the e-assist. But it's not like a he heavily overdone e-assist. It's kind of like just enough. Because it is a sports strike, and they they tried very hard to keep it as such, but right. in this market, you gotta have an e-assist option. You just have to, and yeah. and uh, I think they did a really good job. And I totally agree with you about the design of that e-assist. We might have a closer shot. I know we've got some nice shots of it on our video. Yeah, let's back it up there because we don't. Thank you, Tim. Um, but the uh, the design of that motor is so integrated and relatively small and subtle. Exactly, I was very impressed with. Even that. the battery is very subtle. Yep, yep. I mean, you, you, they did a great job with that. So as to the performance, of course, that remains to be seen. And I believe Brian, maybe you know, I think they said like spring or something is when that's. Coming. Yeah, and not not horribly expensive either. I was, I mean, uh, the trike starts at six grand so i mean it's it, the the trike itself is already pretty expensive but it's only like fifteen hundred dollars extra yep not bad all so right that's not bad at all i want to bring trey into the discussion because he got to ride it a bit trey can you bring yourself on there tell us uh <laughs> besides that smile on your face uh, which gives away a lot tell us uh, tell us about your impressions on the uh e-assisted basheta well i like the trike to begin with without the motor and then the motor is just um just takes it up another notch. It's, it's, um, well, like Brian said, you really can't tell it's on there. If they didn't have, if they, I was thinking about it after I wrote it, if they could hide the battery in the seat or something like that, I don't think anybody would ever know that's an electric assist because they've got such a, a seamless integration into the carbon boom. Even the boom, you know, the, the housing is carbon. So, um, it was really sharp. I enjoyed the ride. It's, um, it, it defines assist. So there's, you know, it's not throttle. It's not an electric, you know, um, scooter. It's a, an, a, an E assisted bike, which on that bike, which is fast already, I can just see, um, uh, I can see a lot of people really liking that a lot. All right. Very good. Thank you, Trey. Anybody else? 
Larry, did you get a chance to look at it? Yeah, I did. And I have to say, I agree with what everybody has said so far. It looked <laughs> really nice. And uh, well, the, the CT20 looks nice to start with. And you just had to think, well, if they're going to put electric sits on it, it'll look like something that doesn't belong. But uh, it really does work well. So I was impressed. Very good. All right. And Larry, there's a little extraneous noise coming. I've muted you. Just if you need to talk, just unmute yourself. Okay. All right. Let's move along then. If no one else has anything, we uh, we saw the Bendit Cycling booth. And uh, anybody had it? I don't know. I really didn't spend any time there. Anybody see anything unusual or? He's got some new helmets, nice and I, stuff. I am dumb enough to not remember the name of them at the moment. But um, he's uh, working with a distributor, bringing in some helmets and stuff. And uh, yeah, uh, Curtis and I have a tradition. We eat Waffle House every Sunday morning together. So <laughs> we were at, at CycleCon, so we were uh, talking about the helmets and stuff over Waffle House. That's a sad tradition. Well, all right. Uh, no, it isn't. Yeah. <laughs> it's a glorious um, thing. Yeah, my wife loves it. And I know Sylvia, she hit that with a walk. I went over there. <laughs> so I, I may be we just... Don't, uh, we don't it. have them in New York. Oh, okay. Well, that would explain it then. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Well, here's a question. Brian? I don't know if you know. Have any plans to expand their trike line beyond the, C the CT? Um. I'm not not sure I'm supposed to say anything, but yeah, obviously I'm sure I'm pretty sure they will. Yeah, yeah, they they've they've talked about some other some more less expensive models. So I don't know when or when or whatever, but they've definitely discussed some uh, some less expensive models. All right, and our buddy Larry Seidman. Hello, Larry. Good to have you on. Uh, we were talking about Azub earlier, and uh, yeah. Uh, he says that the reps were uh, in Colorado Springs. Uh, yeah, they were at Angle Tech, I believe, as they always mm -hmm. make a pilgrimage there. And uh, they had a group ride, and th their two wheelers were fast on the gravel path. So, and a beautiful area to ride in, of course. So, thank you, Larry. It's good to hear from you. And uh, okay, let's. Uh, I think there's one more bended cycle. There's another shot, Curtis. And let's move along. You see those helmets there. All right. So, um, Here's a, a booth that was uh, not terribly prominent, uh, but what they manufacture, it was incredi incredibly prominent at CycleCon. It's Bosch. They make the motors for most of all the trikes that have become e-assisted, um, and they are making a huge push. So um, I got to believe without any question, they're the number one uh, e-assist motor that's on uh, recumbents right now, uh, manufactured recumbents at least. It is, especially since Ghost was shut down unexpectedly. Right, uh, opened up an opportunity. So very interesting, guys. We have that interview uh, in our video. We'll talk about what they do, but and they have a huge push in Terratrike, and we'll get to to them as well. So and they were even doing a seminar where you can get certified as a certified tech or whatever to work on their stuff. So Right. We should say Friday it was dealers only day, so it's not open to the public. And uh, yeah, they had seminars all throughout the weekend, uh, but dealer kind of seminars uh, mostly on Friday. Uh, Sylvia gave a seminar. We'll have her talk about that too uh, on Saturday. But uh, yeah, they, it was like a certification uh, seminar. Some of the dealers were... Um, were astounded by how long that seminar went. I think it was like four hours long. Um, and the, the seminar room was right there next to our booth. So we got to watch most of that, but there's a lot going on with Bosch. And uh, yeah, that was, that was a good thorough seminar, I think so. All right, let's move along. Yeah, there's just another shot of the trikes there. All right, so Davis Carver, our buddy uh, up in Maine, and he was on uh, the show last month. Uh, talking about the first uh, tie glide, this long wheelbase titanium bike that uh, actually uh, Tim, uh, Tim Kane, that's on the show with us today, that's doing the slideshow. Tim uh, actually ordered that and got things rolling. And um, uh, Davis was there uh, to show what he had. He brought a couple more of his builds. And I he told me, basically, he was really interested in learning about uh, what recumbent long wheelbase riders thought of this and to give him uh, feedback 
because he really wanted to make this bike um, as good as possible and and was uh, open to listening to everyone else. So um, it was it's a beautiful bike. The titanium is really something to behold in person. Um, Brian, you want to tell us about what your experience? Yeah, I actually brought our test bike back uh, <clears throat> to him uh, reluctantly um to give it back to him and uh, i have the dual 26 one and uh it's it's uh it's pretty pretty darn nice uh he did a very good job Fun uh, oddly i reviewed one of his bikes about uh 21 or 22 years ago for dirt rag he primarily makes uh mountain bikes so um i did that uh 21 22 years ago and it was well, we'd never met but it was just kind of cool, you know, to meet up. But uh, it's a really nice, nice bike. It's got a uh, AD Carson's seat on it. Uh, very comfortable. Handling is excellent. Um, and as you said, the titanium is just exquisite. The guy's been making titanium mountain bikes for 30 years or something like that. So he kind of knows what he's doing. So uh, it, it, they look great. They ride great. And it's nice to have that void now that Easy Racers is in whatever. Limbo? whatever state it's in zombie um, land, whatever to be yeah. able to get a nice titanium long wheelbase again. Great. And Denny, did you have a chance to ride? Yeah. It? Oh yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I spent quite a bit of time over there. I'm, I'm kind of a tour easy geek and, and, uh, I do like them. And, and, uh, of course that was like uh, candy. I went over there. Now I, I tried both of them. Uh, it was kind of interesting. One was, uh, I can't think of the name of the drive. It was a chain drive. The other was a dual belt drive, which was just freaking awesome. That's what I, that's the one I had. Yeah. And yeah. the only bad thing about that with the uh, 20 uh, inch wheel and a 20 inch front wheel, there was quite a lot of fork flop with it. And uh, that was kind of off putting because, you know, being coming from a tour easy, which has absolutely none and, and you have the same sort of feel for it. But all of a sudden you start out and, and the slow speed is really noticeable when you get it up. You know, you get up over five or six miles an hour. It's not nearly as noticeable. But fork flop is just, uh, you know, that was off putting. And, and then tried the other one. Uh, not there was just a tiny bit of it. And. He had changed it out to the 26 for a little while, but I didn't get a chance to ride it. So I have to go with what Brian said. But I, I just I love the bike. And um, I also uh, that was my first. You know, I've known A.D. Carson for quite a long time, but that was the first time I'd had an opportunity to tr uh, try his seat. And golly, I liked it. And, and we're, we're uh, I'm going to get one for this winter uh, down in Florida for my my L.E. down there. So. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do something with the uh, AD here on the show, but just a, a shout as long as we got the seat up there. Uh, I'm going to make. Well, hang on, Danny. It. We we are going to show AD's. Booth okay. Again, All right. I do want well, to hear what you think. So, about anyways, it. everything else on the bike, and there's so many options for this bike. I mean, it's uh, at, the price range runs from like I think it's going to be in the mid fours. Uh, to well over six thousand dollars, which is just a lot of a lot of options. It's a fatter um titanium tube and it's not springy it's surprisingly stiff wouldn't you yeah. say that brian yeah definitely yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. i drove the dual 26 so it was a bit i never got a chance to ride the 20 inch ones while i was there uh -huh. but um it uh yeah it it still feels like tie though when you stomp it, on it it, it does you yeah. Know? And, yeah um, yeah. it just yeah. has that unique zing that you're not gonna know unless you've been on a tie rush or something but uh, um hey trey um, can you bring yourself in too because i know trey had a chance to ride it so i want to hear yeah. his opinion as well it, it sure put I, a smile on my I, face i thought sure. the funny thing was you're talking about all the drivetrain <laughs> options uh he's never built one yet with a conventional drivetrain because uh, you can get whatever you want so no yeah. one gets the derailleur option everybody uh, gets some weird thing because you can <laughs> and and I was kind of talking to him, you know, conceptually about maybe getting one. And I'd probably be the first one that would just get a regular old school derailleur drivetrain because I'm a curmudgeon and I like that. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I just he's built them with pinions mm -hmm. and all kinds of stuff, and never with a regular just triple crank set ten speed rear end drivetrain. And Trey, go ahead. Yeah, the, the uh, I'm. To be honest, that's only about the third long wheelbase that I've ridden, but uh, it rode well. I did notice a little bit of what you're calling wheel flop, but I was told that on the other bike with the bigger front wheel, it doesn't do that as much. No, the big one, I didn't notice it hardly at all. I didn't get a chance to ride the 20, but on the big one, 
I, it was it was barely noticeable. Not any different than like an a Stratus XP or something like that. Yeah, it had to do with the head tube angle was was yeah. different for that to dual twenty six. Yep, and it's the the seat was extremely comfortable. Um, it didn't take me, but I'm, within a couple of minutes, I was comfortable on it. Um, the the build quality was amazing. I wish I could weld like that, but um, the uh, and how quiet it was. That belt drive, man, you can't. Yeah, <laughs> you just. You're just whispering along, so to speak. You just don't hear anything. I, I hope my wife never finds out about that belt drive. Uh, because, <laughs> and it's very expensive, but but there's absolutely no grease marks on your uh, uh, on your pants at all. I mean, it's really minimal maintenance. It, Guys, uh, let me bring let me bring Tim in briefly here because this is one thing I think he really can add to. This, uh, Tim this was is the all first. Tim's fault. Yeah, yeah, it is really? all Tim. Yeah. Tim, well give done. us a little. Could you give us a little uh, update on uh, on your uh, tie glide and uh, what you think about uh, what Davis has done here? Yeah, I I I didn't know there's a belt drive version. So everything Brian was just mentioning was news to me. So that's awesome. I knew, like he said, there's a lot of different configurations that it was going to be in. So that's and mine's a roll off, for example. You're right. It didn't even occur to me nobody's done a traditional cassette yet. So that's kind of cool. It's a great bike. I ride it all the time. It's my number one go-to bike. So, um, very good. And, and Davis yeah. is a great guy too. He's he really he works hard to give you what you ask for. As and he really does listen, Tim. I mean, I really listen yeah. to you. But that's the impression yeah. I got from talking to him. Yeah, is how important it was for him to be there. He wasn't trying to sell any bikes. He was there to try to get more as much information as he could from the people that ride long wheelbase bikes, especially easy racers. I mean, I think he was really anxious to hear from those people riding this as to how he could improve uh, what he does. So very impressive. Absolutely. So, all right, we're going to send you back, uh, Tim and, uh, and Lars, bring whoever else back in we need. Let's move along to the next slide. Now that I've messed him up, there we go. Uh, and there, yeah, there's uh, there's Trey getting his ride. He was just doing a track stand. He actually wasn't even riding. He's amazing. All right, let's <laughs> let's move along to Cat Trike. So, uh, as uh, many of you know, uh, Cat Trike uh, made an announcement while they were in Portland. And then quickly brought it to uh, Nashville as well at the uh, when he was at the uh, when they were at the Portland Trike Fest. Mark there announced the new ECAT, and you can see the uh, the five five nine right there on the stand with the uh, E assist on it, and that was the big news. So um, they will be coming out with that in the spring and uh, making it for many of their models. I don't think all of them, but many of them. And I believe it will be retrofitable to previous models. So very interesting, exciting news. Of course, another in the line of everything e-assist, which is what we're seeing. And um, let's, uh, Brian, go ahead. And I don't know if you, what you had a chance to check out there, but uh, it, it's, right. it's just another very well integrated, you know, he is this system. It's it's not particularly visually like you know shocking. The Bosch system is look. It doesn't really change the look of the trike that much. And I know that's one thing that some people worry about because you know some cities are. I don't think as much anymore, but uh, you you welcome attention from law enforcement if you're obviously riding an e-assist. So uh, it's it's nice to have something that's very subtle. And I think that's one of the reasons why the, the Bosch is so popular because most of the motors hidden behind the crank set, you know, the batteries aren't that big. Um, it's uh, it, it, and it's just a system that works really well. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad they chose that. And like you said, I think the Bosch is the most popular now. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody else on Catra? Yeah, I could comment. Please. You know, what I really like about these boom mounted motors is they're spec'd for the trikes. And so you know that it's going to work. If you have a cat trike, you know that this boom is going to work. And, you know, some of the mid drives or the, I don't know, I guess they're called like the, the fangs where you add them on. Tim, you know, go really on. Not I'm sorry. So Tim, you can go on. I think there are four or five slides here. So we just page through them slowly. Go ahead, Sylvie. I'm sorry. Yeah, they're just not, you know, they're not going to be spec'd for the trike. And if anything happens to the trike while you're using, you know, another type of uh, motor, you know, you you don't have any warranty. Right. And there's Tyson, Mark, uh, kind of uh, 
you know, clowning for the camera as they do. Best but t-shirts of the show too at Catch Right. They have the best t-shirts. They really do. Now, who's whose feet? Go back to that slide. Whose feet might those be? Anybody want to guess? Someone you should know. Go to the next slide, Tim. Let's reveal. That's right. Yeah. There it is. Larry. Yeah. Ta -da. Good color, Larry. Good color. Larry, tell us about your ride on the cat drive. Okay. Uh, one of the things people have asked me about, they want to say, how does that compare to the ice sprint that I had? And regrettably <laughs> sold. But uh, the first thing I noticed, this system has like four assist increments while the ice with the shimano system the 8000 has three and so there's a a bigger jump between the two and the three on the ice than there is on the the catrike which has three and four so that was noticeable to me uh other than that um they both are legally regulated to about the same top uh, speed which would be close to 20 about 19 point something rather uh, it worked great. Uh, people want to know exactly, you know, well, what about this? What about that? Uh, of course, the underlying catrike is wonderful. Uh, uh, I haven't encountered a bad catrike in all the years that I've been around them. But one of the things I tell people, uh, I can't really give a really good comparison between this and the ICE e assisted trikes because all I had time was uh, to go around and around the little test track there. So if anybody wants a really in-depth comparison, Catrike has to send me one to review. Don't send it to Rochester. Send it to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. So I have a question go about ahead, the, the Bosch system. So it on with the Bosch systems, those are uh, manufacturer built. You can't add them on later. Is that is that true? Like no, you can't, well, they're you actually can't fairly add them easy, to a they're fairly easy. The Bosch's are actually fairly easy to integrate because you just okay. change but, the boom. But can you? Is that is yeah. that they're gonna, sell, the they're gonna sell just the boom? Go ahead, Larry. Now I talked to uh, Mark of Catrike about them being retrofitable and all that, because that is gonna be a real big selling point. Because a lot of people yeah. they've already got a catrike. They won't have to buy a new one. Perfectly good one. Yeah. Um, the, the one thing is, yes, it's retrofitable, but it has to be done by a licensed mechanic. They don't just send you the motor and say, here, uh, so it has to be somebody who knows what they're doing. A Bosch, and it's Bosch's, you know, idea. They don't want just anybody slapping one on. They want it done right. So the people don't call them and say, Hey, this thing's a piece of garbage. Or I want my money back. No, they're going to have professionals, bike mechanics, whatever. And that's probably why they had those four-hour seminars. That's why they have, they want it done by people who have sat for four hours in their seminar. Exactly oh. right, Larry. So, I mean, uh, they were great, uh, but they're put on professionally. So, you know, it's going to – it would be probably cheaper if you could just buy something yourself and not have a mechanic do it. But you don't want to spend that kind of money and wind up doing something wrong. So – Absolutely. Right. All and there's right. the warranty issue too. Yep. And yeah. that's, that's what and it's do, about. Doing that. something wrong could include like starting a small fire in your trike or something. There's yeah. quite a bit of voltage yeah. in that. Battery, Metal things. Which yeah. could be in your car or garage at the time. Yeah. Either, at right? the time. So, yeah. Um, or in your fingers. <laughs> right. You can get and quite a shock out of it. We'll get into it more specifically, but the, you're right. This retrofitting of these mid drives is going to be huge, and Terra Trike uh, is is big into this with the rovers as well. So we'll uh, we'll be talking about that in a little bit when we get to that part. So yeah, and so that's what it looks like when you're on that five five nine with an e assisted motor. Uh, Trey, what was that like besides what the look on your face is? <laughs> oh, it was awesome. I like the, um, we have an ESS trike here. It's a, a different brand, but, um, this seems to be a little bit smoother and I do like the different levels. Um, our, our trike only has three levels as well. So the step in between the different boost is, is different. Um, it much more gradual. So that was really good. Um, but it rides great already. So again, like we mentioned on the, um, the previous, the, the, Bachetta, it's um everything was seamless. They really did their homework. Um, I really like those Bosch motors, and I, I actually inquired about, you know, putting a Bosch on 
a motor that they're not sponsoring. Um, I mean, that, that they're not in partnership with. And he said they don't do that. So because I have several tracks here that uh, I had thought about um, adding to. But, you know, if if they're not in partnership with them, then they don't have the you can't get the boom designed for your trike. So, yep. Hello, Larry. Uh, does it have to look like that? I I assume you're talking about the cat trike, the e cat. Uh, does the motor have to look like that? Oh, he's um, talking about the rider, I think. Well, if he's talking about Trey, then yes, there's. Um, well, the, not you, everybody can be what that. What you see is what you get with Trey. So it's a cross I bear. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Larry, clarify your question for us, and then we'll we'll get back to that. All right, next uh, slide, please. Well, if he's talking about Trey, then yes. All right, somebody needs to be muted. I'm, there, I'm getting some echo there. All right, let's talk about cruise bike. Thank you, whoever did that. Um, let me get that question off of there. Cruise bike, there is Jim and Maria. And uh, the Parkers uh, do a great job with the cruise bike Uh uh, all the line of the cruise bike, uh, is, is, it seems like there's something available for just about everybody. And, uh, they're the, the people that ride cruise bikes, they call the tribe. I think, uh, they have a very, very loyal following. Um, and they had, uh, they had all the cruise bikes with them there. Um, is Brian back with us yet? Brian, I am, yeah. tell us about cruise bike, uh, anything I mean, again, electric assist was their, their new thing. They have an electric assist uh, T50. And, um, you know, it's it's kind of unique. They put the motor in the back. And one of the things that I never thought of um, is it makes the learning curve kind of non-existent. Because the problem you have with cruise bikes, a lot of people, is that first couple miles an hour. Well, theirs is a throttle-based system. So you just throttle it up when you leave the line instead of having to deal with trying to pedal and steer on the same axis and it makes the makes makes it very much easier to ride i mean it just you just hit the throttle and go i and thought then, that was a great innovation too and you you know so and then when you ride a, a cruise bike with or without e-assist i think after you get that boost a few times you're going to learn and then yeah then you learn yeah i think it is seamless i i, I agree i think that was a great idea go I ahead never even like thought of that when I, I got the press release that it was coming out and stuff and i that, that just didn't even cross my mind that that would be something that uh that would but it did definitely make it easier i was actually supposed to take that back with me but uh, we got a new a new car, and I I I underestimated what would fit inside of it, <laughs> so I wasn't able to bring it back. But uh, they're going to be sending me one. All right. Uh, actually, this is what I wanted to show. Nope. There we go, Larry. Uh, yeah. So what Larry was talking about, Trey. So the question about his face has been answered. Let's go on, shall we? Anybody else uh, want to talk about cruise bike at all? All right. So let's move along to uh, well back. Yeah, go ahead. There we go. Uh, right next to our booth uh, is the Easy Load Ramp System. They've been at CycleCon for a few years. Really nice solution for your trikes, uh, loading it up with a nice little ramp, nice looking solid ramp system that they have there. And uh, okay, let's go on to the next, please. And that's Charles Coin right there again, Chuck. And uh, yeah, there's just somebody riding a Zoob right in front of the uh, booth there. Next. All right. So we did not talk to the Ebo people, the electric bike outfitters, but I know it was right next to RBR, a uh, performer booth. And uh, Denny, I know you spent some time uh, talking to them. So what, let's start with you, Denny. Tell us what you learned about Ebo. Well, you know, it's an American company. Um, they've got an American telephone number. They um, Bill, uh, the stuff, I'm pretty sure the motors are built overseas, but they uh, really pride themselves in customer service. Uh, I was quite impressed with them. What The thing that impressed me the most about it was um, it's a rear drive system. They do have a mid drive that they mainly push for uh, mountain bikes and that kind of thing. But the rear or front drive uh, that they have uh, only it, with a battery only adds about 11 pounds to the t entire weight of the system. Uh, it's a brushless motor, uh, so there's no drag on it when you're uh, uh, when you're not using it. Uh, it it's almost transparent. I, I rode one. I rode their. Uh, they had a cat trike set up with uh, a system, and, and I was quite impressed with it. 
Um, my philosophy on motors is, is it doesn't have to be a thousand watts. It, it, theirs are th around 350 watts nominal, which is plenty. Um, they say that they can get up to 28 miles an hour. That's a little fast, but it's uh, they have a throttle option or actually it comes with a throttle, which I don't particularly care for throttles. But the way they do it, it's uh, pretty um, it actually works. I have to admit it worked pretty well because it was uh, uh, down on a twist grip. And if the times that I used it were starting out to give you a little bump to get started. And then uh, if you need just a little bit of bump on a hill, it, it was right there. Uh, I found it to ride with a very low assist or, or none at all. It rode, it rode very nice. Um, like I say, only 11 pounds of weight. Uh, they have options of 36 and 48 volt systems. Um, the, I think they do it right. They've been in business for about five years. Um, the two guys that you there, uh, you see there, the principal guys, the guy on the uh, right is, or on the left rather, is the designer. And um, it, uh, I, I like the system. It, it kind of falls into my philosophy of an assist system. It is assist. Very and um, that's that was my uh, my okay. take on them. We have thank you, uh, Denny. The, so Jamie Rees uh, asked, "Can you discuss the best discuss the best two wheel recumbent e assist?" I assume he means aftermarket. Um, Brian and maybe Trey, could you bring mm -hmm. yourself on? And uh, you guys, what would you recommend in general, if you can even do that, uh, for the best two wheel recumbent e assist? Uh, the, the problem with the the two wheels is you're kind of you're kind of limited to hub motors um because otherwise it has to be integrated into the frame um i would i would still say the bosch if a company is going to integrate into the frame um other than that just i just look up the best of wheel motor systems because those are the ones that are easiest to to integrate because yeah. you just change your wheel hub, yeah go yeah. ahead Trey. go ahead well you add a ton of weight so you know, if you look at mid mounts like they do with traditional bikes, then you know it's it's down at the at the bottom of the frame. But on a on a most two wheel recumbent trikes, you know, it's either a high racer and you know it's up ahead of you, so you have a big big motor sitting there right up under, and a lot of weight you're adding to the boom. Um, yeah, I probably wouldn't want to put a Bosch on a high racer, but like on a mm -hmm. on a long wheelbase, it's integrated into, which I think actually Carver does that, if I remember right. Yeah, but, well, um, yeah, like yeah, uh, that's yeah, more traditional. Be, but, so you have yeah you have the, the the wheels in front of you, but they're still closer to a traditional. All bike. right, so guys. And just to, there. just to touch in general on what you know what Trey said, the thing I always say about e assist is a lot of people say, and I think Pete can probably attest to this too. They'll say, "Oh, I'm just going to add the e assist. I'm only going to use it on hills. I'm not going to use it any other time." No, you are. Like you're adding that much weight uh, to the bike yeah, or the trike, yeah. you're gonna have to use it. So don't yeah, think that you're just gonna put it on and just for a little help me out when you need it. Uh, you're gonna have to use it, and that's fine. But yeah, that, that's but just to know that that's you're gonna be using it all the time. Yeah. All right. Look, while we're kind of on the subject, and we just addressed this briefly, we have a long a lot of go, uh, ground to cover yet, uh, guys. Do you think there's any room for improvement? And recumbent drivetrains. Oh, yeah. So I, yeah. that's a huge subject, yeah. uh, Yaki. Yeah. But uh, just yeah. real briefly, uh, Denny, uh, Brian. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Technically, yeah. There's there's room. Um, the battery systems will get lighter. Um, that I think that I'm predicting within five years we're going to see at least a thirty percent reduction in weight. Uh, that's where the the whole thing. And you just touched on it about weight is. When you're when you've got an extra twenty or fifteen or twenty pounds onto that bike, you're going to be using that system a whole lot. All right, uh, Ryan, go ahead. Just I mean, stuff. I'm like I said before, I'm old school. I I like just derailers and chains, and <laughs> yeah. don't don't really see the need to do anything different. Um, I've Thanks. never been a huge hub gear guy. I know a whole lot of people are. Um, and I think the hub gears are getting more efficient every year. You can definitely see that. How about belts? I guess that would be one other. Belts no, are, are belts are cumbersome on a recumbent. Like uh, one of the only ones they really work on is a long wheelbase two wheeler. Um, very difficult you, on a. You on hit a it trike. on the head when you said old school because if you look at trikes, all the drivetrains are. You can't get any of the new go fast, whizzy, bangy, cool stuff you can on a traditional bike, you know, the, the one by twelves, the, all this other stuff, because 
you know, with the trike has a unique environment where you need a bigger gear range and um, they have different spacing in the rear and everything else. Yeah. So well, not that's right. The all is a one by 11, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've yeah. got, and a two, I've got a two by 12 on my, uh, on my mm -hmm. Pachetta, but, um, okay. but yeah, and that, that's, where, that's, where that's I was going pretty to. rare. So the two wheel bikes like a uh, cruise bike. You can put all the cool stuff on them. You know, it'll run with all the new stuff, but it's, it's, because it's more like a traditional bike, but yep. if you're on a trial, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, it is old school. I'm gonna have to. I, I know you guys could go on a while about this. We have <laughs> too much ground to cover. This will be for another day. But thanks, guys. All right, let's uh, let's move on to the next slide, if we could. We're still talking uh, e assist. There are the more to talk about, and we uh, spent some time with uh, Rakesh at Falco uh, E Motors. Uh, Rakesh actually uh, did a couple of uh, seminars himself about his uh, his uh, uh, motors, and uh, we have uh, a fair amount of uh, video of him talking about uh, his type of motors. He's not a big advocate of mid-drive motors, as you might suspect, uh, and likes the hub motors, as you might expect. But uh, there it is. We'll we'll give more details about that, guys. Any uh, specific things you might want to say about? Uh, the Falco. Well, the, the Falco motor has a, a sensor in it that measures how hard you're pedaling. So when you increase your pedaling force, it increases the assist level, which is nice. But the Ebo has a system that senses if you're pedaling like 40 RPM or more. So you just get up to that RPM and the Ebo kicks in and it's not dependent on how hard you pedal. So that's kind of nice. We've had riders that were fairly weak and they couldn't pedal hard enough to max out the power available in some of the some of the assist systems like a Bosch or a Cat Trike, uh, Steps, Shimano Steps, uh, or a Falco. But with the Ebo, as long as you keep turn the pedals, boom, it's there. So that was a sort of a neat thing. And I think the the torque sensor is more complicated, and the cadence sensor is a little simpler. So maybe maintenance will be a little simpler and troubleshooting maybe a little simpler with the Evo. That remains to be seen as far as I'm concerned. Thank you, Peter. And just to finish up with the e-assist here, Sylvia has a good question. Maybe someone can answer. So yeah, we talked about the elegance and small size of that Bosch motor on the Bichetta uh, and Catrike certainly looks bigger. Is it a different motor is the question. Brian, do you know the answer to that? Uh, no, I don't. Sorry. Yeah, we don't know how they what you know how they do that. If Bosch, I mean, you almost might think that Bosch made something very specific for them. I don't know. It seems like they would have had to because it is. You're right, Sylvia. It is definitely smaller. So, all right, let's yeah. move along here. And they have the, that integrated front light and stuff too. That some of the other guys don't have. So right. All right. So green speed, folks. Many of you are aware. Probably most of you by now that uh, Ian Sims passed away earlier this year and things at green speed are uh, a bit in limbo. Um, there have been uh, uh, some offers to purchase green speed. Uh, nothing has been settled as far as I know, as of the moment uh, they continue to sell them. Um, but um, it's, it's a big question mark right now and it's kind of sad not knowing, uh, seeing green speed kind of uh, uh, being directionless right now. Brian, you have a comment about that? Too? No, I mean, I, I'm I'm 99% sure that it will be purchased shortly. Um, uh, but yeah, right now there's, they obviously haven't come out with any new models or anything. And uh, and they're just trying to figure out what to do. But, you, you know, you that that's completely natural to understand. Ian was... Uh, irreplaceable so um it's completely understandable and it did not happen that long ago right you know so it's completely understandable that they're they're a bit rudderless at the moment but uh I, i'm sure they're gonna go on i'm sure somebody's gonna buy them they're made in a in a factory overseas somebody just has to keep paying the bills and they're still gonna get the trucks <laughs> so it's, it's not it's not like you have to worry about 500 employees or something you know it's uh it's a pretty turnkey operation. I'm sure someone will buy it. Okay. Let's move along here. And that's, uh, I, I, that is, uh, that's a green speed, right, Larry? Isn't that what you do? That is. And I was just going to say that uh, I've been a, somewhat a fan of green speeds seemingly forever. My first trike was a GTO. 
It was a Mine big, too. heavy, yeah, big, heavy orange thing. Uh, and I've the fastest strike I've ever ridden is their uh, <clears throat> arrow, which I would love to have one of those. I had one on loan for a while, and they had to give it back. But I am very impressed by the GT20, which is what I'm riding there, and the X7. Um, I I like small wheels, and the X7 has 16 inches, you know, and um, they're great. So I, I really hope somebody keeps going with them because I'd hate to see them suddenly just go away. I, I really like green speed. Okay. Let's move along here. And Haza... Had a great big booth there. There's uh, David and Anya was there as well. Talked to them um, about their line, which uh, which revolves around their Delta trikes. Very, uh, very unique, uh, almost unique, I should say, in the industry. And they were talking about that the kids bike, the small one. The is it Tret? Is that what it's called? Trets. Yeah. Yep. So. Um, that's all I know right now about it. They're a great, great company, and people just love it. Uh, anything else, guys? About Haza? All right. Well, that fairing is so cool, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, that's just amazing. Right. Okay, let's go. Uh, go to the next one. And there's another one. Oh yeah, we we must say that uh, at every event where Haza goes, they they connect up these trikes in a very unusual way, making a Haza train. And uh, they see the uh, Chris actually uh, in the front of that. And uh, whoever wanted to hop on would hop on, and they would go all around the venue. I think maybe I had another shot. I'm not sure if there's another one in the slideshow. But a lot of fun. We th That's about the only thing I got to ride because I was too busy to ride much of anything. but. Uh, all right, let's go ahead, uh, Tim, on to that next one. You're fine. HP Velotechnic was there and had a few trikes. Uh, very popular on the test track uh, that we saw. Um, and, uh, you know, a few uh, minor changes, but I didn't see anything uh, earth uh, shattering from them. But always good to have them there showing off those great trikes. The Gecko was big. They had... Uh, that's a scorpion, I think, on there. Who know, knows a little yeah, bit? Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty yeah, cool. It's I thought it was cool they were showing off that uh, HP. A lot of people don't know HP. Like They have their stock colors, but um, especially on the higher-end models, you can get whatever the heck you want. And this was a very, very fancy paint job um, that was a copy of a color that uh, one of my message board posters, Three Tracks in the Sand, his... He he was the first one who he sent them a paint sample and said I want this, and um, they've made a few cents. Uh, but it's, it's a really gorgeous, like uh, purpley greenish metal flake, bluish. I know this is not a good description, but um, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous color. Like they can do a lot of really cool stuff, and uh, and you know, it shows, shows great in the sunshine too. I mean, it is yeah incredible. Yeah, and then their yeah, trikes aren't cheap, so if you're gonna get one. Drop the coin on the on the custom paint is kind of my my opinion. Yeah, Myrtle going to have something like that anytime soon, uh, Sylvia. A new job, new paint job. No, no, my my trike is seven years old. It was before they were even offering. I bought that before they were offering special colors, but it's going strong. So and it's I'll got character. Yeah, right. yep. it's that gray. You know, the old. Remember where they all all they had gray. was gray and orange. Oh, I had one of those. Yep. <clears throat> all right, oh. guys, let's go ahead and uh, move along. And uh, there is whoa, let's oh, that was try it, yeah. That's no. that. No, I don't no, think so. Try it. I think that's a scorpion. That's it, yeah, is. Oh, that's right? a scorpion. Wow, yeah. Yep. yeah. I remember they had it set Load up with all the bags and the and the uh uh foam pad rolled up behind the on the top yeah. of the rack. Yeah, they did. First, I thought it was a Falco battery on the back. Yeah, Triad has, uh, in fact, uh, a, a, a bike that's all decked out similar to that. So I know why you thought that. But okay. all right, let's move along, guys. And over to Ice. Uh, there's Chris Parker. Spend a little time talking to me. We got a lot of uh, information from them. They uh, are touting their VTX, which has been uh, ridden and once again uh, ridden to uh, a winning to the winner's stand uh, overseas uh, by uh, Matt who works for ice as well. And uh, a lot of interest, a lot of people riding the ices that, that were there on the track. And 
Yeah, there. Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it's just a gorgeous trike. Gorgeous trike. Next one. And there's another shot. Look on. There's Matt in, on that poster in the background. And uh, one more, I think, maybe. I thought it was cool that in the World Championship Edition one, they run drums instead of disc brakes. Yeah, that is, that's a new thing, that small drum break that they have. Larry, I think yeah. this was your shot. Very nice. Yeah, and I, I do have to say that I've ridden several VTXs, including the current year model. But when I rode that special edition model, the first thing I noticed, of course, was the electronic shifting they had, which was really neat. It didn't, it wasn't like some models that decide when to shift for you. It's just over up on one button and down on the other in order to go to the big chain ring at the proper time and so on. But what I really noticed that it may have had something to do with the, the tubeless tires or something, it felt smoother than any VTEX I've ridden. I just really, after just a few moments, I thought, boy, I wish I could take this home with me. Yeah, <laughs> it was probably the really good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Oh, and I do have to say, even though the, the VTX doesn't have it, the new style seat that ICE puts on their sprints and so on, most comfortable seat I've ever had. Um, I've had other people sit on it and then go ahead and buy the seat. Uh, the air seats? Really. The yeah. Air seats. Okay. I mean, yeah. like I've said, uh, if it came with the bathroom and Wi-Fi, I'd never get off it. So great <laughs> seat. All right. All right. So here was uh, Premier Kites. I think they had some flags, really didn't spend much time uh, talking to them. But uh, let's go on to the next one. Somebody's under the table. Was there somebody under the table? <laughs> yeah. There were some deals going on under the table. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, so that is an upright bike that you see there. Clearly, someone was trying to do some sort of recumbent thing with it. But let's move along, uh, if we could. Good, good observation. All right, so yeah, this was the um, the walking bike that I saw all over the place there. I don't, you know, it's not really recumbent. Is that Mark Powers? Yeah, yeah. And there's Mark Powers there. We I had a chance to say hi to him. Uh, let's go on to the next one though. God, people were walking so fast on those Mark, things. They were. I mean, they were just flying on those things. <laughs> Mark Power caught me blasting Lady Gaga when I pulled in the parking lot. And he <laughs> laughed at me. <laughs> All right, so there is uh, Rob uh, having a chat with me at the uh, Performer slash Metabike slash RBR booth. Uh, Denny spent a fair amount of time. He's doing some work with uh, Rob. And uh, Denny, you want to talk about how things went at the booth maybe first? Yeah, we had quite a bit of interest. Yeah, you want to, yeah there we go. We had quite a bit of interest. Of course, uh, we're, it's uh, uh, in his trike line, uh, they're, you know, um, they're well-priced. Uh, they're kit trike. Um, and, uh, they're, um, a very good value. Uh, they're all, they come with fenders and, and just about everything, but a mirror, uh, tools to assemble them with. Uh, I've had one here at the house for quite a while and, uh, the, um, uh, they come in a 20, they come in a, uh, 26 and they come in a 26 suspended, which is, um, uh, <clears throat> uh, there isn't anything in that price range, and those are right around eighteen hundred dollars. Um, it's he's still working on. There's still some refinements to make on it. Although, from the one I had, which is about two years old, um, and I've made all the upgrades to it, but to the ones that are current, uh, there these are very very nice. Um, uh, the uh, the only complaint that I saw, and I was there for most of the weekend was the um, people either liked the seat or they didn't like the seat. It doesn't yeah. have a lot of adjustability. Matter of fact, very little. Uh, that is being worked on. And I think that's, once they get that figured out, I, I it's very, very good. Okay, anybody uh, else want to chime in on the performer? Who else? Gets yeah, the, um, the, 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 the new. Amazing. The paint the job, new, Sylvia? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That I was, that's exactly what I was just going to say. So, and this isn't a secret. I heard John tell several people. So the new Schlitters are also made by Performer. Yeah. And yeah. I could tell immediately because the paint job was awesome. Mm -hmm. And Performer's powder coat is just fantastic. It's, it's beautiful. They can do almost anything. Yeah. And also the Metabike that is there too on, mm -hmm. on his booth. Um, he's made a lot of changes to that. And uh, Really, really liking the new Metabike. I got to get my hands on one of those for a longer ride. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, Meta- and it also obviously made amazing my paint bike. job on that. That's yeah, uh, yeah. Meta bike was uh, uh, a Spanish bike, and uh, the interesting thing about the Meta bike is that uh, you can get just about any configuration you want wheel wise. Yeah. And uh, it, you know, change forks out and stuff like that. He's and made he, a lot of changes. Since yeah, and he has. It, it, and on. again, Rob's a guy that's been around recumbents for about 20 years. So yeah. he's used just about every little trick that he knows. And he keeps learning them. Uh, yep. Just about every one he knows to, to refine and make things better. All right, guys. Let's move along, if we could. And uh, two uh, recycled recumbents. So uh, I guess I don't have a good shot. Uh, exactly of AD, but there was his booth, and uh, you know AD's been around for a long time. Had something to do with that tie glide we talked about. He continues to take frames from upright bikes and uh, put them together into his uh, Mach two or Mach three. And, 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 and uh, go ahead, make a comment on it. And again, the paint jobs are are, are really really good. Um, yeah, I, I think it takes him to a local auto body place. I, I, think, I think he does. does. I don't I didn't ask him about it, but golly, they they. They look durable. I mean, yep. it, it, it looks quite finished for a bike that's basically a home built. Yep. And you uh, can build them yourselves if and you're you not can, aware of that. He has everything yeah. online. Danny, yeah. go ahead. Uh, I don't want to belabor all this, but uh, but you did have something to say about uh, AD's seats. Yeah. And, and like I say, I tried and I've never tried a seat. And I've known AD for several years now. And uh, uh, I had an opportunity to try it on the Carver, and I really, really liked it. And then I said he wasn't able to uh, let his bikes out for test rides because, um, you know, it's a manufacturer's liability kind of thing that he really doesn't have. And um, but I was able to, you know, take a sit on it. And, and golly, I liked it. I, I've got one coming for my uh, uh, Tour Easy LE that I have down in Florida. And uh I'm going to uh, give that a good uh, run out this this winter. Very good. Um, the, um, it, and it'll adapt to several different other uh, types of bikes, too. Yeah. And he's, of course, it's his seat, but he loves that seat. <laughs> and I've heard many other people say that as well. Yeah, so yeah. Let's move along. <clears throat> and uh, there's our uh, friends, uh, Steve and Suzanne, at uh, San Antonio Bike Tours. And a really interesting um group uh they uh steve gives tours in san antonio and he does so on trikes which they can supply you so uh we i think are going to have steve on next month and explore more about the san antonio trike uh, uh san antonio bike tours and uh, learn more about what they do but uh look into them if you haven't already and check us out next month and we're gonna we're gonna find out more about that and the great hat, of course, he he gave us one of those hats, uh, which even Lars wore. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's about all I'll say about that. Let's move along to the next. Very good. Now, uh, Brian was talking a little bit about the uh, Schlitter bikes. There's John. We had a chance to talk with him about his latest creation. And um, I think Brian will be back in a minute to uh, help us out with that. But um, let's go to the next shot. I think we might have yeah, back. better. Oh, there you go. Sorry, uh, I had a sneezing fit. I didn't think you guys would <laughs> want to watch that. So. All right. Well, that's a very valid excuse. Uh, Brian, uh, so, yeah, there is Kelvin Clark actually taking a good look. Mm-hmm. He's sitting right in front of the actual bike that you took to evaluate. Tell yeah. us what you know so far about this bike, if you would. I mean, the, the prices are for the base one are, are pretty ridiculously good, you know, for what it is. They're like, I think they start at like about three and uh, sky's the limit from there. I think the one that I have, the orange one that's in the back there, I'm pointing at my screen again, like you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, the one in the back uh, there, it has carbon wheels, the custom colors, uh, carbon cranks, all that stuff. I, I think even that one is, is, I think it's still only like 4,500. Um, aluminum frame, Made by Performer, which is is a, is a good thing in my opinion. Uh, the paint jobs are awesome. When these like what you see up front, this red and black uh, two tone one, that's what the stock colors are more going to be. I think they're going to be in red and blue and and white. Um, the matte black and the orange are uh, are custom uh, colors, but it's Performer. They can do whatever he wants, and he said he'd have it in like a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. So uh, pretty yeah. cool that yeah. that you can just order onesies. Like I wasn't expecting that from 
from performer, but he says he can. So, um, mm -hmm. and John knows, John's forgotten more about going fast on a recumbent than any of us have ever known. For so, sure. you know, true it's uh, words. true words. All right. Yeah. yeah um, make one quick there. comment about they're super adjustable. That was the other yeah. thing I wanted to say. Super adjustable. Like it, the seat quick. adjusts, the boom adjusts, the handlebars adjust back and forth. Yeah. One quick comment about Performer. Uh, you know, they've been around for quite a long time. And and uh, that brand back in the 2000s, early 2000s, up to, you know, up to maybe 2009 or 10, didn't have a very good, uh, didn't have a very good uh, feeling. They, were, they, they put out, no. some stuff, they put out some stuff that wasn't very good. Let's yeah. put it this way. They were, they were really bad knockoffs of, of different designs. They have really come a very, very long ways. And a lot of it has to do with with getting uh, really uh, getting partnered up with recumbent people in this country or around the country, around the yeah. world, really. And they have responded very well to it. They're doing very good work. I mean, I, I would put them equivalent to it's uh, it, it, this is an obscure reference, but like in the in the knife world, a lot of stuff is made, you know, overseas and. They're like, you know, like Ria or we or one of the really high end manufacturers like that, that you, you may not know the name, but they do excellent, excellent, excellent work. All right. Okay. Next, I think we may have. Yeah, that's it. So uh, Schwabi was there and um, they always have a big booth there and sponsored uh, dealers reception after the Friday session and uh they uh, brought a lot of their wares with them. And uh, so that's Schwabe. Let's move on to the next one. And oh, by the way, just one thing on Schwabe. They have a tubeless tire now. They're just coming out with it. And uh, it's it's very nice. I watched them. They installed a, a set for Rob, or, uh, one of Rob's bikes. And uh, it, uh, it came out very, very well. Uh, so they're in the market now. Very good. Thank you for that, Denny. All right. Uh, yeah, there's Sun Bikes. Uh, brought their entire line. I can tell you, I might have even a shot of this. Probably the most popular thing out there was that uh, sociable tandem, the side by side. Everybody wanted to ride that, including Sylvia. I think Sylvia's <laughs> working to getting her sound back here. She'll be on with us in a minute. Sylvia, let us know when you're back. And uh, yeah, there's a little bit better close up of what they got. Next one. Yeah, there it is. Uh, there's a couple of local gals uh, that are in our local riding group, uh, uh, Lori and Amy, and they were on uh, riding by our booth at the time there on that uh, on that Sun tandem. All right, next one. And TerraCycle. So uh, Pat, uh, of course, was a big part of the Pacific Trike Fest uh, two weekends ago and then uh, packed it all up and... Uh, Got himself and his stuff to Nashville, and uh, and there it was. He um, always has amazing accessories for every kind of recumbent you can imagine. Beautifully done, machined. Uh, it's all there from the fairings uh, uh, to the um, oh the clamps and the idlers, just about everything you can imagine. So, um, anybody want to say anything specific about something they saw with TerraCycle? Everything they make is beautiful, really high yeah, quality. It is. it is very good. Without a doubt. Okay, let's move along. Maybe another one or two. And the flags, of course. Yeah, there you just get a better. And of course, we had we talked extensively with Pat on the video, so you'll get a chance to see everything up close. All right, Terra Trike. So that's a lot here. Terratrack. What's that? A lot here. Uh, there is so much. They had the biggest booth that was there. And Terra Trike is just uh, exploding with ideas and 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 new models and new accessories. Uh, I had a chance to meet Jack, the uh, the CEO, the owner, uh, who has kind of taken charge since about the beginning of the year and has sent Terra Trike on a really exciting uh, direction. Uh, they had so many things there. They are uh, redoing. Um, what was the Rover into a new bike called the Maverick. They've got the Spider, which is their new sports bike. Uh, they have got, uh, uh, what else? Uh, the, uh, the, yeah, well, there's their tandem that they have. 
Brian, go ahead and tell us what you might have seen there. I don't want to. Get so I was surprised to see the old school Whiz Wheels name back again uh, because they've now also are the U.S. distributors for KMX or maybe even bought KMX. I didn't exactly how that went. Um, so they have two different brands and uh, uh, they the spider is under something called uh, what was it Advanced Design Concepts or something yeah, like we're that? See that uh, maybe yeah. the next slide, Tim. I think I've got a shot of that in there somewhere. And uh, I will say uh, the spider was uh, hugely impressive. I was very, very impressed by that. Yeah, we'll uh, the, slide, Tim. Let's get a look at that. Then we'll go back to the KMX. The the okay, designer, yeah, um, Advanced Trite Concepts. That's what it is. Sorry. Um, the uh, the designer was there, and I went out and wrote it. Uh, the, it comes in both this carbon fiber seat version and an aluminum seat version. The aluminum one you could ride, this one you couldn't. Um, I went out and wrote the mesh seat version, and I, I came back and actually like walked up to the designer and shook his hand. It's that like it, I was that impressed by it. That was in a, so many little details. Like if you look on this photo, you can see that idler towards the back, how the rear can't call a swing arm because it doesn't swing but it does come apart but the rear chain stay there to kind of go up, up over the around. idler it's yeah. just little little silly things like that and the cruciform has those really sleek looking braces on it um i really really liked that they have the new gts coming out another one of their higher end trikes i think is gonna be about three thousand bucks and that also it's a little bit more uh, pedestrian than this but also hugely impressive um they've really they've got and the Maverick's really nice. It's definitely a big jump over a Rover, and it's not any more expensive. Right, Brian. Yeah. If you would have, uh, if you would have seen this trike a year ago, uh, who would have been one of the very last manufacturers you would have thought? Oh, uh, Terra Trike. Yeah, yeah right. absolutely. I mean, they have just uh, flipped in terms of their uh, development and uh, research kind of. Uh, ideas and they're they're just coming out with all kinds of interesting interesting things. Very fun to watch. Who is who else wanted to say something? Yeah, I, I rode that Maverick. I actually rode the Maverick and the next model up from that. And um, I don't know what the price is on the Maverick. Do you know, Brian? Oh, uh, they started a they they're back down to starting at a grand like they used to. Be. Is that so, right? Yeah, there's yeah, going to be a, a uh, three speed version that wow. starts at a grand. So and yeah. Uh, Tim, if you could, Tim, if you could back up to the KMX slides, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I just wanted to mention here, right there is good. Uh, those those cute little KMX trikes that uh, you know they are now distributing uh, in the U.S. were incredibly popular with the kids there. They were riding them all over the place, and I think that's going to be a big thing for them. It's very different, very a big thing for them as well. Um, Me, mean old Chuck threw a, one of the kids off the track because he was riding all over the place, and he was <laughs> at our booth <laughs> sobbing. Because he wasn't allowed to ride anymore. Well, you know that that bike was originally developed for uh, uh, BMX racing in in yeah. Uh, my my England. kid, my kids had, yeah, my kids had, had them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, I they're can tell you fun. from my talking with Marshall that they have something like that in mind uh, in the future uh, of, so. of of sponsoring that sort of thing with uh, once they start get going with the with yeah, the BMX out there. Absolutely. It could be a lot of fun. So uh, I think very it's much fun. Incredibly new uh, direction for them to go I, and uh yeah go ahead yeah i was, I was I wanted to finish up about the maverick i i was impressed with the ride on it uh is um uh, you know i liked it uh it was it it felt well it fit, fit well and i I'm, I'm amazed at the price if it was uh i'm not sure what i'm trying to think of the one i had had a uh, derailleur on i, I want to say i just wrote it yesterday so i should remember better than i do but i want to say it was like a thousand i think the most expensive one was like 1400 wow Wow. Okay. Yeah, and nice. I do want to add in, we talked about it briefly before when we were talking about e-assist. So, of course, Teratrike's big into e-assist. Oh, the, their seat is is uh, very comfortable as well. That, that, now, that. That, that seat has an add-on cover on it. That's yeah. not the standard. Yeah. That's, a, that's an optional extra, that okay. thick pad. That's not standard. Uh, let me just uh, finish up with the e-assist, and we'll finish up here with the whole thing. But So they are very excited about providing – uh, e assist for their current rovers. Uh, what Marshall said was they have like 16,000 rovers that are out there, and they are going to have a Bosch motor on a boom that they can retrofit, which I think is going to be huge as well. Another exciting thing there's the G GTS that, yeah, it's like that, that they're going to sell as many of those as they can make. 
Very nice. Okay, next one. All right, I think that's anything else with Terra Trike. I think that's no. let's move along then. Ty Trikes was there. Um, Ken was there showing off his fine titanium, well made uh, trikes and quads. That and he kind of specializes in doing stuff with um, uh, with people with assisted assisted needs, uh, veterans, and that sort of thing. It's good to see Ken there. All right, next. And our buddies uh, at uh, Trident Trikes, Tom and Rudy, uh, and also Yata, of course, Trikes, uh, were there. And uh, they were our major sponsor again this year for uh, CycleCon. So we thank them as we thank all of our sponsors. As you can see in the lower left-hand corner, we have mentioned each of those. Um, and, uh, yeah, let's start with, uh, Brian, you want to start again with uh, what you saw at Trident? I, I just I was really surprised they sent me the press release before the show that it's been ten years since the stowaway came out. Like I couldn't. It seems like yesterday. I remember that thing coming out and uh, it being a big deal. You know when it did because of the price point that it's what that what's there in that picture is a special ten year anniversary edition of the stowaway. But uh, yeah, Tom's always been great to deal with, and now with the Yaucha stuff, they have some they have some inexpensive but crazy stuff and. Uh, them. And accessory wise, uh, they've got the canopy that they brought out last yep. year, which they've made some upgrades on and, a, and a, a new headrest that goes with it. So they're always working on some yeah. stuff in a big wide line. All right, go ahead. I didn't see the racy trick there. Did he not bring that? Oh, he didn't. Uh, the What was that called? The chameleon? No. Yeah, I don't a, remember. Yeah. Same. But uh, yep. No. It was All the right. gossamer. 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 Yeah, yeah right. that's right. Very good. I, I asked about it too, and it wasn't there. Mm. That's with prototypes, you might expect. So, all right. Yeah, let's go on to the next one, please, Tim. And try out. So, I guess another one of the uh, uh, one of the dealers that we saw there that surprised us with their booth was Triot. Uh, it was huge, and they had what ten or twelve trikes laid out in all kinds of uh, uh, all kinds of confirmations there at the show. Uh, what you see right there is their, their cargo version with these massive racks. They, they said uh, with those racks and with those bags, it would carry uh, 55 gallons, like a 55 gallon drum. So I don't know if you want to do that, but if you did, there's your trike for that. So uh, they also to dispose had, of your enemies. That's the trike. That right. You know, you uh, who who would expect that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like the last thing you might say. Uh, and paint jobs. They they paint them now. So um, Yeah, I thought that was cool. <clears throat> that's a little bit different. But uh, so Marty on the right, the uh, owner uh, of, of Triad, and his son on the far left there. Uh, David, who talked with us extensively. You can see, I don't know if we have another shot of it, but right there on the far left-hand corner is their new sporty version that's coming out. You don't necessarily think of Triad as being sporty, but they are coming out with that. So they're really diversifying uh, their line. Um, and I guess, the and, uh, and of course, the, uh, the Bosch Motors, of course, uh, on those as well. Lots of interesting stuff. That's about all I have to say. Uh, Brian, go ahead. You, uh, we'll ask you, and then Sylvia will uh, ask her as well. Yeah, they're they're doing anodized frames too, so you can get it either painted or powder coated or anodized. And um, they had an anodized all black one there that looked really cool. I I went out there um, earlier this year and visited them, and uh, pretty and they they have like enough spare parts for I think it was a thousand trikes or five hundred. I don't remember. It was a lot. You know, they, they bought enough spare parts for everything. Uh, they're having some production delays at, at the moment, but uh, but they, or they were having some production delays. They're gone now. They said they're they're rocking and rolling again. So um, uh, everything's mostly all made there in Utah. The the even the powder coating, the anodizing that they just added is all done there in Utah. So uh, pretty. They're gorgeously made things. Very nice. Okay, and uh, Sylvia, do you want to mention? Can you talk to us? Are you there, Sylvia? I She's, she said she I, can't hear you. She can hear everyone else, but can't. Oh, uh, I don't know. You guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All, All right, right. Sylvia. Uh, what do you think about it? 
Yeah, yeah we can yeah, hear it here. Is, is, she, is she muted by any chance? She is muted. Hang on. Yeah, let us know what you think about you it, Sylvia. Can't, you can't. Can you unmute yourself, Sylvia? Now, Sylvia, t somebody tell her. <laughs> Un unmute yourself, lower left. Uh, yeah. I don't know sign language. Uh, Down there. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. 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 Bottom strip. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Sylvia? Yeah. Like everybody can hear me? Yeah. Yay. Yay. Tell us about okay. try. Can you hear me, Sylvia? Yeah, I took a couple of these now. Actually, I think I took three. And two had electric assist, one had a roll off, one had a new Vinci, and they had the electronic shifting, which was a revelation. I'd never ridden. Well, there she we'll goes. Do I don't know. Yeah, we lost you, Sylvia. So let's um, uh, let's go on the next slide, Tim. Sorry, Sylvia. All right. So this was unusual and very interesting. Uh, the University of Wisconsin at Milwaukee uh, rep was represented there by Andrew, Professor Andrew, that you see there. Uh, they built a tilting trike that. Uh, that used a, a couple of uh, uh, man, recumbent manufacturers uh, components, including a front end uh, for the most part from cruise bike, as you can see. They use the uh, ice uh, uh, hard shell seat that you see. And this was really uh, an amazing trike. We did an extensive interview with Andrew and, uh, and Trey got a chance to ride it. I don't know if the rest of you guys did. Trey, bring yourself on and uh, Let's uh, see if we can get you up there to tell us about <laughs> your experience. It was fun. I can't wait for you guys to see the video of Trey on there. What what what'd you <laughs> think about this trike, Trey? So, yeah. Um, well, we have to talk about the two different phases. So you can have it locked so that it operates where the wheels don't tilt. Go ahead, but, Tim. Well, there's a couple of slides here. I think we may get a chance to see more of it. Go ahead. So yeah. there's the tilting Hold right that. there. So it's much easier to ride in that mode because it rides like a, a normal uh, two wheel recumbent would for the most part. Um, it's, it's a narrow track with a high center of gravity. So when it's locked, you would think um, you would think it would be easier to ride, but it's not, it's, it's very odd feeling. But after talking with him and understanding, I think what their intent was, well, they had a competition, they had to do certain things. So they had, other alternatives um, to what I'm suggesting, but or saying so that competition, by the way, guys, uh, sorry, Troy, uh, the ASME uh, university competitions around the country. And uh, we did it a few years back. Uh, we actually covered one that was here in Athens, Ohio, and the university um, uh, mechanical engineering departments from around the country. Uh, the kids there put together uh, something to compete and that's what Trey's talking about. And so they were mm -hmm. in one of those competitions. Sorry, Trey, go ahead. That's okay. So you see that wheel in the front to the left of the picture. That is the device that locks or unlocks the tilting mechanism. So um, I think they put the lock in there to get, because whoever can stop in the shortest distance or something like that, I, or, or come to a stop, a complete stop and start again without putting your feet down or something on those lines. And that's where they were using it. But in this practice, if they were to ever make something in production like this, um, you can start off with it locked um, and then unlock it as soon as you get moving. It's kind of think about cruise bikes. This has the, the movable bottom bracket in the front. Cruise bike, the, the people that I've seen ride it, the hardest difficulty is getting that first motion going, right? So you, you, you start off, but with this one, you lock it, you put your feet up on the pedals and you just start pedaling and then you reach down and unlock it. Um, so that was the odd thing. I guess the, the, the narrow wheelbase with the movable bottom bracket and the high center of gravity is what makes it feel really weird to ride it with it locked. Um, but fun, eh? It was fun. I had a blast. It took me a couple of minutes to get used to it. But once you get used to it, especially with it unlocked, it rides just fine. Uh, um, yeah. Indelibly uh, penned in my mind is uh, is Professor Andrew running after you as you came down the road, getting ready to make that right turn in, into this, uh, this uh, shelter for the rest of your test ride going, I don't think that I would ride that locked that fast on a turn. <laughs> yeah. But to your yeah. credit, you kept it yeah. upright. So <laughs> yeah, it was, that was, yeah. All right. That was fun. Anybody else? It's on a cool the bike. This is a really cool bike. Anybody else? If you can the, ride uh, a cruise bike, bike, you can ride this. Yep. 
Okay, let's move along. All right, and so <laughs> Peter's going to uh, have a little something, I think, to say about this. Uh, I noticed this trike uh, when Trey and I were out doing our uh, uh, flying the drone out in the parking lot. I saw this trike sitting out there next to a truck going, what in the heck is that? And then I found out later on that AD brought that. I'm going to let uh, Peter tell the story of, uh, of uh, the Chinook. Peter, go ahead. Yeah, this, uh, I haven't done much research on it, but it appears to be an early production hand trike. Uh, I'm guessing it's from, uh, well, uh, it has the drive system is from an Allen X, which was made from 83 to 93. So I'm Tim, go ahead. We have a couple slides, maybe close-ups. Go ahead. I, Thank I you. am 80% yeah. sure it's Russian. Wow. Do you think? Chinook, yeah. well, could be helicopter-based, yeah. Yeah, I'm 80% sure that's one of those Russian vaporware trikes that only a few were actually made. Okay. But I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's Russian. So to work it, to drive it, you use your hands and push the handlebar one forward and the other back, back and forth and back and forth. Then it goes, you know, it's a hand trike, so they're not real fast, but it works. And then to steer it, you push both the handlebars to the left, to turn left, and you push them both to the right to turn right. And uh, that works pretty well. I put a little oil on the mechanism because it's pretty stiff, but I I think that was a dampener, intentional dampener. Um, I only got it up to maybe 10 or 15 miles an hour, and it, I began to wonder if I wanted to go faster. <laughs> but uh, it's a neat bike, and it's going to look great hanging from the ceiling. I've still got to do some work on the gearing to get it to shift gears. Other than that, it's together and rideable. So AD so brought, brought it. it, it only has you. one rear brake, and it doesn't stop for beans. Yeah. So AD brought this trike, wanting to unload it with someone. Yeah. And uh, and then you talked to him and and picked it up. Yes. For yeah, the uh, it's, it's gone on the Bicycle Man Museum, which is up to about fifty recumbents now. Very nice. When All you right. get it running, let me know. I want to I want to come down and play with that thing. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. There you go. There's Peter on it. So okay, it looks very humbling. It's it's not that bad. It's ready to ride around the parking lot. The gearing doesn't work yet. I mean, it's just it looks like you'd realize, oh, I have no upper body strength than I thought that I did. <laughs> well, I wouldn't. Uh, a big hill would be quite a different event, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's sure. provision for you to, to strap your waist in and also strap your feet in in case you want to roll it over with <laughs> and yeah. be thoroughly attached to the vehicle. <laughs> All right. So on that Friday night, uh, I talked about the... Uh, Schwabi um, uh, uh, um, little dinner that they had for everybody. And there's uh, Chuck Coyne who uh, talked to everybody about that day, the dealer day, and also made the big announcement about where uh, CycleCon is going to be next year, which uh, we've already let that cat out of the bag. Uh, it's going to be Dayton, Ohio, which of course I'm very excited about because it's about an hour away. So it'd be very convenient for us. And I think it's Lucky. a great location. I know. I was hoping for Cleveland. I know. I, well, we I know. I know. He. We had kind of gotten some inside intel that it was Ohio somewhere, and I was right. like, "Oh, please be Cleveland," because that's only about three and a half hour, like three and a half hours away from my house maximum. But uh, yeah, Dayton. I, I, it is right near the trails. It, it is a smart. It is a smart place. I a think smart so. place to put it. That's a great idea. And okay. it's still closer than Nashville. It's only about wow. seven hours away from me. Right. So. Yeah. Next one, Tim, please. And uh, yeah, we we're just going to briefly talk about the seminars that took place there. And there's uh, Maria Parker uh, talking in her seminar. And I told you that Sylvia also uh, gave Sylvia, can you unmute and are you, you got anything that can you share with us? Yeah, this was a really different experience for me. The first time I had given a presentation was the weekend before at the Pacific Trike Fest. And I pretty much gave the same presentation at uh, at this one too. And I just talked about mostly how I got into riding recumbent and then trikes and then touring and what I've learned from touring. It was fun. Very good, good crowd. Good crowd. Yep. Yep. You were well received, as I said. Okay. Next. Getting close to the end here. Yep. And then on Sunday they had, I think they did this Saturday too, but this was kind of like towards the end uh, of the event. They had everybody lining up on their bikes and trikes and rolling down uh, this uh, road into the test track area. And uh, everybody's got video of this. It's kind of fun to watch. Next, please. I have a, I have a bone to pick with one of our uh, panel members about this, though. Yeah, well, go uh, ahead. Back up there. So I had, pick the bone. I had the orange Schlitter all set to fit me. 
because I was going to go out on this thing. And then Pete snaked it, and he jumped on it, and we fit exactly the same. And then I had to ride a red one that was way too small for me, and I looked like an idiot in everybody's videos. I'm weaving all over the place because my knees were hitting the handlebars. And Yeah, but to be fair, Brian, uh, Peter looked great. Um, yeah, he did. he did. Yeah, Peter looked great. Yeah. I, was, I was back there with you guys. You, you look. Yeah. Pete and I fit exactly the same, and he was like, "Oh, this one fits me," and rode off on it before. And you'll I got see, a you'll see to... Peter riding by in all the videos too. Yeah, pretty, pretty on pretty. my bike. That's a sad story. Uh, but but your bike is very recognizable in the back <laughs> of the car on the interstate. Yeah. <laughs> As you followed him, right? Yeah. We saw each other the no, next day in me. Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go on to the next slide, please, Tim. <laughs> And, uh, you know, we got some interviews of uh, people uh, test riding, including this gentleman uh, riding the ice. And uh, so we have lots of those interviews on our uh, video. You can hear what people had to say about the uh, test riding. That's and one of my types. favorite parts of your videos is the just talking to the civilians. Yeah. Where are you from? What are you riding? Where are you yeah. from? What are you riding? It's uh, it's pretty extensive. Thank you, Brian. That was nice <laughs> of you to say that. All right. And. There we go. Um, there's a long story. Oh, we don't have time. You got your new frame. Yeah, yay. Trey but, got uh, his new frame. Trey, yeah, Trey has been looking for a new frame for his arrow. He had uh, he had a broken frame and green speed. Uh, Jerome, uh, Trey, give us uh, a just give us your thirty <laughs> second uh, story about this. It was a great moment for you. So. Um... <laughs> I don't know if it's 30 seconds. Yeah, Trey's I've been waiting told the story in 30 minutes. So All right, I, let me summarize. Seconds. My frame cracked four months ago. Uh, we've been trying to hook up and get a new one. So uh, I talked to Jerome. It finally came in. Something told me to call him the other day, and I called him. He said, as luck would have it, the container just came in. So we just arranged for him to bring it to the, uh, the, the convention instead of shipping it. So, yeah, it's in my shop right now. I'm about to get started swapping over all the parts from the old frame to the new frame. Let's all give Trey a sympathetic round of applause. He's a happy Yay! man. Yay! All right, Trey. Congratulations, happy, happy. my friend. All right. It was worth the trip for for that, if for no other reason. Oh, but yeah. he did help us out a lot, too. So, uh, <laughs> All right. Well, uh, another slide or so, Tim. I think we're getting near the end there. Yep, that's our goodbye slide there. So there are all the... Uh, there are all of the patron sponsors that helped us out and got us to uh, Nashville and CycleCon. We thank them all so much. You will see them mentioned again uh, in the video. But again, we couldn't do what we do without all of these guys' support. So please, when, you, when you're when you talking uh, to any of these uh, manufacturers or retailers, let them know that you saw them on the Layback Back Report. It helps us out, and uh, we appreciate it. All right. I think what we want to do now to finish up, we're going to take just a couple of minutes mm -hmm. and find out about favorites. We always got to do that. So uh, let me start and then we'll go down the line. Uh, bike, trike, accessory, I guess, is the way to do this. If you have anything else that doesn't fit into that category, you can let us know. Uh, bike wise, uh, I got to say the, the Schlitter bike, uh, especially the one that uh, Brian picked out. Beautiful, great, innovative uh, John always does great stuff. Very impressed with the Schlitter bike. Trike wise, I, you know, I'm going to give it to uh, Terra Trike uh, and just about all of their new trikes. Uh, again, innovation, a big change for them. If I had to pick one, I guess I'm going to say that Spider, which I didn't even uh, ride, but very interesting stuff there. And accessory wise, um, well, uh, Terra Trike's got the pedal, uh, the, what are they? The, the pedal extenders with the yeah. swings, pedal swings, I think is what he calls them. And uh, I know when we did the video with you, Peter, you were working with Phil on some stuff like that. I think that's very useful and a great thing that they do. So those are mine. Let's go. Trey, go ahead. Tell us what uh, bike, trike, um, and accessory. I'd like the, uh, the Schlitter bike, the, simply because... Well, we may mention earlier about um, using all the latest and greatest component groups and things like that. And that bike will handle them all. So, um, you know, different through axles, different dropouts in the rear. You can you can go from a cargo bike to a racing bike. That's yeah, mine's mine's through axles front and back. Yep. So you can use all the latest and greatest technology on that bike. And that's exciting. Um, uh, the trike I like. I still like the um, Bichetta, the, the carbon electric. Um, I think that's awesome. The way they've integrated that, that's, um, that's going to be really 
hard to resist. Um, <laughs> so, and then let's see the accessory. I still like the, um, we, we use fairings on our HPs on some of our trikes and the old mounting systems have tube clamps and the new mounting system, which they came out with last year. Um, they still, it's still my favorite thing. They do that. And they're, it's, I think it's called their winter fairing mount. It's just, you talk about TerraCycle. TerraCycle. Yeah. Okay. Um, TerraCycle's winter mount. Um, it's one, one band that connects it and it's easy. You can slide it on and off. You don't have to unscrew a bunch of stuff. It's just really easy. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Trey. Peter. Uh, I would say for a bike, I'm, I was disappointed that Rands was too busy building Phoenixes to be there. I wanted to get a ride in the Phoenix <laughs> this year. Uh, for trikes, um, you know, I like that's the, tough for you. I know. I like the ice sprint. That's a, a versatile, sporty. I really like the sprint. And for accessories, it's got to be something from T Cycle. It's either electric assist or it's something from T Cycle, and the pedal swing would be a good choice there. Oh, oh the you. fairing mount. I, I think from T Cycle is well done. You know, that it all does what they say it does, and it's all nice. Good enough. And Denny. Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't try a lot of bikes. Uh, I did the Carver, loved the Carver. Uh, I'm excited to see that come to market. Um, as far as trikes go, I kind of concentrated on the sub $2,000 trikes. And uh, I thought the nicest one of all of them was the Enola uh, from a cat trike, but that's right up at the end at $1,995. Um, and I thought that was really, it, it, Pete's sitting right there. Yeah, I know. And I like it. I already gave him very good, very good reviews. I couldn't that. pass that up. Sorry. I know. Yeah, I look at him. I see him. I see that squinky eye. Yeah. But uh, I thought that uh, the old, uh, of course, like you say, it is a type top uh, in the price range. But I, I, it did feel good. Um, the only thing I saw was that it was a fixed uh uh, seat, not adjustable, but mm -hmm. it hit just right. Uh, it, just for me, it did hit just right. Um, and then as far as accessories goes, I did like the EBO. I uh, didn't, uh, uh, as far as uh, an electric assist, I, I thought that was, uh, that's, I think, the way they should be going. Right. Most all of them is, is a hub assist. Um, and I think that's that's my end. All right. Thank you, Denny. Larry, go ahead. What did you... Uh... Fine. Okay, I'm yeah. probably going to echo what some people have already said. As far as the bikes go, it'll be the Carter. Even though I already have a uh, uh, recycled recumbent Mach 2, which I really like, so it would be a close call. The The Carter was better, but it's hard to beat the Mach 2. Um, for for price. The, the, yeah, the price, it's like, oh my God. Oh, geez. Um, well, anyway. It's recycled. Uh, it's cool. Yeah. Uh, and let's see, uh, when it comes to, uh, well, the accessories, you know, the, uh, what you call it, the fairing business from Terra Cycle was really good. Uh, but when then it comes to the trikes, I have to agree with Denny, the Eola is very impressive. Uh, I really liked it. The first time I rode one at the RCC last year, I, I was expecting to be, eh, you know, but instead I thought, I really like this. Um, don't have one, but uh, I really wouldn't mind. But when it comes to the trike that impressed me the most, yeah, the electric assist, uh, uh, the Bachetta was good, but I'm not that crazy about the seat. It, it seems too flat and doesn't hold me in when I go through a turn really fast. Uh, so the most impressive to me was the VTX. I mean, like I said, it might have been the tubeless tires. I like that electronic shifting, even though I can live without it. But the overall feel of it, it was smooth, it was fast. And I thought, boy, if somebody just looked the other way, I'd be stuck in the back of my car to be gone. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think they never watch it. doesn't it. fold. I know. Well. Would it fit in your car? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, the, with the rear wheel in between the front seats, it'll work. Ah, uh, okay. Just barely. So, But those are the three things I like. All right. We have a question from Teresa Bose. Did I miss much? Yes. Nah. Yes. All yes. Right. Thank you very much. All yeah. right, uh, Brian. Did we? We already got you, right? No. Nope. Yeah, I'm good. Go, please go. Uh, my favorite bike is obviously the, the obviously the Schlitter Freestyle because it's in my garage. But uh, I, it could have easily been the Carver, but I already had that, so um, I'd already ridden it. Um, uh, I would say uh, for trikes, for me personally, I would say the Terra Trike Spider. 
Uh, but I think for the market and for most people, the Teratrike GTS. So uh, I think that's one that's going to be a, a pretty big hit. Uh, as far as accessories go, um, I just I like that at least two of the major manufacturers are offering the Bosch system as a retrofit. I think that's that's going to be a big deal. Um, it's going to keep guys like Pete busy installing, you know, ESO systems. But if it comes in a box and with instructions, you know, that that's going to be great for a whole lot of people. All right, good wins. All right, Sylvia. You know, I, I didn't try any two wheel bikes. I'm, I, after riding a trike for so many years, I'm not sure I could ride a two wheel bike. I certainly don't have courage to get my other foot off the ground. <laughs> but I really love, I've always really loved the way the cruise bikes look. And I think the Schlitter bikes, they just look amazing. Uh, as far as trikes go, the most innovative has to be the Carbon Bachetta. Uh, but I really thought that the Terra trike, I think it was called the GTS was probably more mainstream yeah. and I rode that. I thought that was a really nice trike. And um, as far as innovative um, accessories go, I don't even know if this is new, but it's new to me. And that was that electronic shifting. I just thought that was the bomb. That was amazing. Very cool. Thank you, Sylvia. I think Lars, we need to get Lars up to talk about what he saw. Lars, can you bring yourself up there? You got to dump somebody, pick somebody to dump. Don't pick me. Thank you. <laughs> well, I had I haven't that I time it. for to look at anything <laughs> <laughs> because I kept you so busy. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying exactly. Well, I, 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 I'm going to say I'm going to say Gary. I did see you getting a bit snippy a few times. This is what I'm accused of. You were a bit. You were a bit snippy. Uh, no, okay, uh, which of my which one of my <laughs> crew members is going to defend me? Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the most silent you've ever heard on the laid back back report. <laughs> that worked out so perfectly. Uh, thank you. Have to remember that, Gary. All right. Not to be, to, I'm still going to give Lars a chance because uh, I uh, appreciate what he does. Tell uh, us, Lars. But likewise, I love the Schlitters very much. You know, they just look nice, and I'm, I'm sure they ride nice. I haven't had a chance to ride one, but uh, I think um, those were... Well, at least optically, the the nicest bikes uh, out there. Um, trikes. I'm go. I'm going to go with the Bochetta. I think those will be a nice competition to the VTX, for instance. Um, they look fast, as you said. They're they ride nice. So and well, accessory wise, um, I think. I haven't seen much of accessories really, but um, um, you know everything on on um, TerraCycles booth was like worth taking a look to it. You know, I like the idlers and stuff like, and all the stuff you can put on your handlebars to fix gadgets and all that. Way too much for me. I would like having. A, my bike would look like a cockpit if I had the money, <laughs> like a spaceship. Very good. Okay, Lars, thank you. And thanks for everything you did. Uh, maybe I didn't thank you enough for everything that you did. You, and, you did. Don't worry, Trey. Gary. Everything's good. No, it's too late now. <laughs> don't don't. <start> <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Lars. All right. So, uh, Tr uh, Tim, can you get our uh, sponsor slides ready to go? We'll go to that next. Thank you, guys. I, that was everybody, right? I think that was everybody giving us uh, yep. their opinion about uh, – about the top three things. It was great. It was a wonderful show. Um, and let's talk about the sponsors of this webcast. We have TerraCycle. From fairings to headrests, whatever accessory you need, Pat and crew have you covered. Clearly, we just talked about it. And Trailside.bike. If you find yourself in Florida near the Withlacoochee Trail, stop in to see Andrew and his crew, and Cruise Bike. Their patented race and record-proven front-wheel drive geometry changes the rules of cycling. Now comfort doesn't come at the cost of performance, but fair warning, your cheeks may hurt from smiling. And Lightning, surprising speed, comfort, and agility 
featuring the superior climbing quality that you've been looking for. Check out Lightning Recumbents today. All right, guys, we just have a couple quick announcements and then we're going to call it a day here. Uh, first of all, a very quick uh, sports uh, note. Our friend uh, Sandy Earl, uh, also known as uh, Red Pearl, right? Uh, Danny, bring, yeah, bring yourself yeah. up there too. Yeah, if you would, uh, bring, yeah. There we go. Um, uh, finished it. Finished the no-com race. Danny, give us just a, a, a minute on that, will you? Okay, yeah, I'll give you a quick minute. Uh, and no Country for Old Men is uh, they called no-com. It's down in the a big bend region of uh texas uh it's a very remote area uh tim if you got sorry tim if you go to the next slide we have one of uh, sandy there maybe we can show that okay. too if you have a chance yeah go ahead. they have uh, uh three races a 208 a 383 and a 1000 and sandy uh took on the 1000 mile race now it's never been finished by a woman but she was it was one entered this year who did uh beat her by about four hours and uh, maybe five hours is a little bit more than that. But she is absolutely the first person to ever uh, finish it solo on a recumbent. Her and her significant other last year, Bill, uh, did the uh, two person. I crewed that last year and uh, they finished that in, a, in, in good time. And Sandy did this in 94 hours and 50 minutes. Um, quite a feat for anybody. Uh, it has well over 30,000 feet of climbing. Uh, it's in a very rugged and remote part of the United States. It's so remote out there. You can't get an AM radio station. I mean, it, it's just, it's, it, 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 but it's beautiful. It has a certain beauty down there. So, so now Sandy is the, uh, most rugged, uh, recumbent rider that I know. So other than, uh, taking on Ram, uh, this is, this is probably the, one of the longest races in this country. Yep. So there you go. Very good. And our our heartiest congratulations uh, to oh, you, Sandy. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm as excited she, as she is. She worked. It. I mean, it's not something yeah. she hopped on a bike and did. Yeah. She worked she very did. hard with, a, I think, and a new it, coach, if I read correctly. Yeah. So it's, congratulations. It was to a two year dream to get yeah. it there. Good, good for you, Sandy. All right. Uh, a couple of quick video updates before we go. Uh, I mentioned earlier uh, at the top of the show. We attended the Pacific Trike Fest uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago. We're going to have a video out on that. And, of course, uh, CycleCon, as you see there, as we've been talking about the whole show. Uh, that video hopefully will be out before the end of the month. I will get to work on that now that this show is over, and uh, we'll hope to have that out within a couple of weeks. Uh, we don't have any viewer submissions uh, this month because we had too much going on in the show, but just a quick reminder, if you've got pictures of your accomplishments or events you wanna share, please send those submissions to us at laidbackbikereport at gmail.com. What's coming up next month? Wow, uh, this is exciting. Uh, we have Maria Lagerstam, who was the first person uh, to ride the entire um, length, I guess you would say, from the coast to the South Pole and wrote a book about it. Uh, and she did so on that ice fat trike you see right there. That's really the reason the ice fat trike exists. Really interesting story. She's an amazing person. We look forward to having her on. And also, as I mentioned, we're going to have Steve Wood on from San Antonio Bike Tours uh, to tell us about the um, the trike tours that he leads uh, there in San Antonio, Texas. So we look forward to having Steve on as well. All right. I want to uh, thank uh, Brian uh, Ball and Bent Rider, as always, for their promotional support. All of my panelists, you won't be able to see all of them right here, but um, but thank you, uh, Trey and Lars behind the scenes and Tim especially. Good job, buddy. I know that was hard uh, getting that first slideshow done. Uh, I think uh, I think you did a great job. So uh, and thanks to all of my panelists, everyone who attended uh, CycleCon and 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 shared their views uh, with you folks to make this show uh, what it was today. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. And thanks most of all. To you folks uh, for tuning in today and, and watching us, uh, we appreciate so much uh, your support of the Laid Back Black Report. So until our next webcast, from all of us here at the Laid Back Black Report, so long, Bent Riders. <laughs>